Time's a charm. Yes. Let's go. Will it become live? I don't think I don't think anyone really knows. I don't know. Uh, we're gonna oh. see like. Oh. I think it's starting. Moved? I think it's moving. Yes. Yes, it's working. I think the stream well, is live. It's loading. Bye. Yes, we are live. We have, we have, uh, we have. What the fuck is that overlay, man? There is. Well, no I mean, I just kind of, you know, yeah. I just so sure. we put have two Sams while we wait for Brazil. You know, I mean, you know, we might as well put something there. So half of your head, <laughs> oh, you know, that's man. good. Oh hell no! Yeah, I mean, hell we might as well make it interesting. So now there's there's two of you. Yeah, why not? Easy. Why not? Yeah, easy. I think Brovo is getting triggered already. It's interesting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm not even surprised. Hmm. So yes, guys, I'll just give you an update on the situation. Brazil will probably arrive at some point. Who knows? I don't think we... He's outside. He's adventuring in the world. Normally he does it in interior, but this time he's actually doing it in the real life. So we have to wait for him. But don't worry, he'll probably be here. And But meantime, we have, to entertain us, we have these two fine gentlemen. We, of course, have Sam from Snow Crows and Hater. What's up, haters, from the guild, Quantify. You may know trash them guild. from... Yeah, trash Guild, yeah. You may know them from their website, uh, where they yeah. tell you how to... tell you what builds to use. But I mean, uh, I mean, I guess we can just start off there. When are you going to add Minstrel Chrono to the list of meta builds for Mesmer? I think after this trio by Guardian today, yeah. I think we have to add it. <laughs> yeah. Just have to get yeah. it in there. It's uh, the advanced tactics. You know, if, if you're a really dedicated Chrono Monster player, you're going to want to craft that Minstrel set. You want to go for the trio Veil yeah. Guardian? You just need minstrel. I remember, yeah, I remember how it went in guild chat. It was like people started writing in our guild chat, yeah, who is gonna like dedicate themselves to playing the minstrel? And then everyone was like, yeah, it's gonna be time to craft it. Just get all the boxes, <laughs> get that minstrel, be meta once again. Yeah, like, I wasn't expecting that at all. It's, it's I mean, I, I all I can say is I'm incredibly ahead of my time. I mean, we run that minstrel chrono. <laughs> Getting those 420 healing uh, regen ticks, Vape Nation, obviously, it's just, that's the good stuff, alright, that's just... That's I mean, I think heavy stuff. raid is just easy if you want Minstrel Chrono. Mm. Yeah, it is, it is just easy, just easy mode. Same with Healing Tempest, I mean, we did Veil Guardian with 10 Healing Tempest, fortunately, Snow Crows did not beat our record for world's slowest Veil Guardian, so Salt, once again, still have the record uh, for that, yeah, we have course. the world's slowest. Of so we still more first, regard. more slowest. Yeah. yeah, easy. Like I have been, I have been told that uh, you guys actually don't even run DPS matters. You just like put the uh, heal, the outgoing healing, in the chat instead, and you measure that in yeah. your runs. That's how I, you get all your numbers. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You know, and we turn the timestamps on as well to inflate it even more. <laughs> you know, that's, that's oh boy. the most important thing. Uh, you got, you got to make the the healing as much as possible. Yeah, I mean, Minstrel's Chrono, it's hard carrying It's the future. Them. Yeah, it is the future. Obviously, congratulations to SC. You've, you've done you've done good work there. Doing the Lord's work, you know? It, you know, it's... That means that Snow okay, well, they're if, at if least want... three times better than your average player. So that's that's quite the yeah. achievement there. Oh. Right. If you want to truly thank uh, the players who participated in that video, you may decide to whisper Goku and Abe these two letters. T and G, and that, that's how it's gonna go. I'm gonna write them in the chat. Okay. Everyone whisper them. Just these two letters, and that's perfect. Why? For that. what, what, what does that mean? What is this? It's, it means that you're congratulating them, that they are so good, that you're impressed by the plays, all in two letters. Just write this to Goku, he's gonna love it. Okay, well, I mean, that's Guys, what I Guys, go recommend. for it. Yeah, just do it. Yeah, <laughs> Definitely go for it. I mean, I, I think... Uh, I guess we can kind of move on to that topic then. I mean, seeing as you can do Veil Guardian with three people, do you guys think raids are too easy? Uh, it's not really that raids are too easy, it's just that raids have been there for so long that you need to find a new way to make it somewhat relevant. And like we've seen Quantify doing it with six people and now three people. Like it's not that it's easy, it's just that it's boring. Yeah. Do you think this have is to create these challenges? Do you guys think this is an acceptable way of having a difficulty in the game? Basically, self self setting goals and achievements to kind of go for. You know, an imaginary achievement for zero achievement points. Do Veil Guardian with only three people, or would you actually like to have something physically in the game uh, that you know there's there is a title for? You know, or you know, Aww. lonely, friendless for for solo Veil Guardian. 
I mean, I wish there would be any race achievement that actually challenged you, to be honest. Like, like I mean, I, th I think it's kind of weird if you have to challenge yourself by, like, doing low man kills and stuff. I think the game should offer as well something, like, that challenge you, you know? Yeah. However, Hater, if we if we look into the past, the only relevant PvE content we had before the uh, the raids arrived were actually dungeons, and mm -hmm. it was quite a habit of the hot PvE guilds to try and do dungeons with less people than it was meant for. I mean, the cap is at five people, but doesn't mean you have to do it with five. We've seen a lot of trios, duos, solos, a trio tournament even. Like it was actually recognized as a format, a proper format for PvE. So I don't think that saying that you need to go low man to create relevancy for the content is necessarily a problem because it's something we've been doing for four years now. Oh yeah, because we're kind of forced to do it. I mean, Aina just doesn't offer anything really. And I think that's like kind of the wrong statement of a game designer. I mean, mm. like, why not just have to like arena net give us something that challenges us instead of we have to actually find something yeah, I, I think that's a long way. I mean, I guess it's fine. It works, like how it is now. But and as you said, it worked in the past as well. But I don't know. Yeah, it, it to a certain extent it also limits what you can really challenge yourself, right? Because you can't actually change the fight in any particularly significant way, other than just reducing the number of people or just trying to skip skip mechanics or something like that. Whereas if they actually created some kind of different thing that would actually tr you know change the fight like uh, on, on keep construct right where you can extend the ring you can have the ring permanently there uh, that's something that actually changes the fight in a way that you have to do things slightly differently but i mean even if you reduce the number of people you have or you try and do gossip with no updraft stuff like that or with you know no people or you, you yeah, stuff like that you, it doesn't actually there's no in-game framework there that actually is changing anything it's just self-imposed so I don't know. I mean, but... as I said, I mean, it works kind of like right now. Guilds just do low man stuff or other like challenging stuff. But as I said, it would be just nice to have Arena Net give us something that's actually appreciated by them as well. Like, you yeah. Know. Yeah. Exactly. Well, wasn't there uh, wasn't there something of the such when people decided to do this uh, like um, crossing of maps the fastest as possible because the only thing we're getting is apparently story instances and sometimes a new map so obviously the only relevant content we should go for is speed crossing maps that's the future that man. is true yeah i mean you, i mean imagine you can you can see videos i mean i, I believe actually uh qt they have some videos of speed running jumping puzzles actually trolling some people on reddit uh there was a guy who posted um, that, oh, look how fast I did the not-so-secret jumping puzzle within about uh, half an hour. I think uh, Justin just finished. posted just posted a video of her doing it quicker. It was pretty good, pretty troll. It was nice. I actually never finished this jumping puzzle myself before. It too hard? It is too hard. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe they need to make raids I'd... have more jumping puzzles in? Please no. Yeah. <laughs> Hell no, hell no. <laughs> like, I, I'm with Marcel on that one. I have not managed to finish it either, and I got ported by Rumpo, which just goes to prove how trash of a jumping puzzle player I am. <laughs> Had to get ported by Rumpo. Oh. So I, I, well, I guess I got the... ported as well. On the first day it got released, I just stood there and waited for a portal. <laughs> and I got it. It was good. Yeah. It was fun. I just <laughs> left. Back to Lion's Arch. Got those achievement points and get out. Simple. Get Easy your, game. Get your blues and greens from the chest and simply run away. That's yeah. a good attitude to have. That's the, the speed run attitude. I mean, if you think about it, it didn't take you very long to do the jumping puzzle at all. You were just standing there, ported up. That's a speed run, right? Actually, it's true. I have the fastest time yeah. at the moment, but I don't have video proof. Yeah, that's a shame. Right, it's okay. You don't need to put video proof. I don't, like... yeah. Just put yeah. screenshot. Just put a, a few yeah, screenshots of the, enough, of the yeah. journey. Yeah, we all trust you here. It's fine. That's good. That's good. Yeah. I don't think there's any problems here. Yeah. I anyway, mean, in terms of actual challenges, then, what, what do you think would be a good? I mean, for it, it, in the existing bosses, what kind of weird restriction would you like that to be? Uh, I don't know. Um, I, this actually doesn't really apply. I kind of thought about this, but then I realized it doesn't actually matter because of the way Keat Construct works. So, you know, you have the circles or the spirits. Why not just both at the same time? There you go. There's a challenge mode for you. Boom. Or with, uh, let's see, uh, with... 
uh, Slothosaur, there's just a reduced number of imbued mushrooms. 80% reduction to healing? Come on, that's res and sleep, man. Come on. Hey, these girls don't need healing anyway. They just don't I get mean, hit by anything. Like, first, if you... You can, like, start with just, like, reducing enrage timer and making mechanics more punishing in general. But I guess if there's, like, hard modes or whatever, it would be kind of nice to have, like, additional mechanics mm. that, like, one shots your party or something like that. I don't know. Yeah. But I would like I would like just to to say that there would be a problem at some point with that because of the game's limitations. Like it's nice to have a lot of mechanics. I don't know about you, but some people have less good computers, and you can already see the incredible FPS drops if you are at Vague Guardian and then you are standing in green. You have the blue spawning, and you have to do the break bar, and then suddenly 10 FPS. Like I don't think I'm the only one in that situation. I'm asking the chat, but the more mechanics they add. The problem is that at some point you're going to have to render all of this and then either you don't see shit because of the visual noise, which is increased by everything they're releasing, like the ugly gliders, the back piece with feathers, ugly legendaries like Eureka, and um, yeah, pretty much this kind of stuff is going to be the mm. limitation. Yeah, I, I, mean, I know what really you mean, point. but like, I mean, it's because mostly the game is poorly optimized as well. Like, I don't know. I mean, of course, you can't overload a fight with like billions of mechanics and stuff but i think as i said like you could first just start like going on the rate the enrage timer reduce it uh make the the current mechanics more punishing as well i think in some like vg for example if you miss a green circle your party doesn't wipe most likely you can recover from it but want to just make like make it like everyone in the party just is dead instantly Oh, what is this? What is this? Hello, is this Brazil? Hi. I think Brazil has spawned. Just, Brazil? just move me away, please. Y yeah, yeah, yeah. Who the hell is this pale face shit? I think that's me. Wow. No, not you. You look like a carrot with blonde hair. <laughs> Sorry. Nice. <laughs> wow. I'm in a, I'm in a bad mood. I feel like hell. Yeah. I'm sorry, cat. I had to do it. So just hi. I, I could have missed. I've never missed. I've missed less tea times in teapot, and we. I have to be better than him. Wow. So, that's that's unfortunate. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Yeah. I, want I to guess be the I best. should probably open Twitch chat, huh? Yeah. They're they're all excited to see you. It's good. They all, all waited right. for you. Yeah. They're they were only here for you, really. They were all gonna leave so, soon. So, uh, first, let's talk about how. Uh, Snow Crows did a trio with the Minstrels Chronomancer. <laughs> we, we already touched on that, but I imagine you'll be very pleased. You were very no, pleased no, when we you heard about that. Okay. We, we didn't touch on it yet, so, uh, you know. <laughs> Are you proud to have I set was, the new method? I was right. Yeah? You're like Nemesis. Uh, was... You were right, Hey, though. isn't Sam from Snow Crows? He is. Yeah, so I was what right, huh? What the fuck are you eating? Flesh? Flesh? <laughs> oh my god. Is that why you're wearing a hood? You just went out to kind of kill someone and put them in a sandwich? Oh boy. I, I'm, I have to say I'm a little bit disturbed right now. I'm afraid as well. Yeah, I'm, I'm, this is actually a bit scary. <laughs> yeah. The way he's looking at us, I just, yeah. he just yeah. pierces my soul. Like, yeah. It's Staring like he's looking too. at me and... Yeah, it's like he's it's looking like he's at you with the eyes of, I, I know what DPS you're doing. I know yeah. you've been lying about your numbers. I know you've been part of inside <laughs> thing about you. Inside a your training. healing isn't up to the standard of uh, the minstrel chronomancer. Yeah. Reap all your druids. Yeah, exactly. Just Brazil looking at you. I mean, at the end of the day, if, if, if druid didn't have grace of the land and glyph of empowerment and frost spirit, why would you even take druid anymore? You can just heal with mesmers. Yeah, you see, you need to delete grace of the land from the game. Okay. So who's this other guy? I don't know who it is. Is that haters? Is it me? Not sure. Maybe. I'm... What <laughs> position are you in to say that? You look what? Like a dog toy. No, what? I think it's me. <laughs> don't bully haters. Come on. I, I can squeeze your cheeks and go hee 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 like that. The fuck go is for this? it. Just try. It. This, this is this no, is I pretty fucking I can't, toxic. Okay. Holy shit! I can't really <laughs> do that with my friend right now. Yeah. But Jesus. Alright, it's nice to meet you. I don't think I've ever seen you before. And I wish it had stayed that way, but anyway. <laughs> oh 
Oh, all right. Okay. That's good. It's, it's, yeah, it's yeah. nice to have you on. Thanks for coming. I think we can all You're agree. You're gonna scare him away. Like, come yeah. on, Brazil. Like, if you want to be truly, like, a nice person, like, I mean, we all know you've been making these casual videos to try and appeal to the larger crowd. What you should be doing right now in order to appeal to both Hater and the crowd of his guild members is, like, posting some anime picture in the chat or talking about your waifu or the amazing holidays you've had bringing your body pillows and through like you can do this come on brazil be friends now yeah i don't think anime is good <gasps> kids don't watch anime wow excuse, excuse me what? what did you just say they <laughs> how are you gonna well, uh, subi like is gonna kill you yeah, can we, can we get That's an official? True, okay, I mean, okay, guys, I think there is now internal drama within QT. We can expect the game well, to no, I'm, tomorrow I think that... into Loopy and uh, probably some random name, like probably Ivy gonna resurrect or something. Like, this is a good time for it. Uh, I think I think there is, is a kind of an ongoing war within, in, like a civil war within QT. It's kind of the, the animes, or the weeaboos, if you will, uh, fighting <laughs> against the people who would consider anime uh, a mistake, or at least... Not a desirable uh, thing to have around. I think you know it's fine. You know, I mean, we have got some anime faces in chat. What is this? this? Oh, force and sub. How about that? Yeah, I think I'm just gonna disband QT tomorrow. I mean, oh, that's fine, I guess. Yeah. So uh, everyone can just watch uh, anime. Is that you can good. just replace all your streams with anime or replace uh, raids with anime? I'm still trying to get like an anime chat cover, but uh, like I. I mean, every time you go for it, you just kind of throw up a little bit. It's it's, it's yeah, kind of hard like, to to really follow through. Teapot's but, seen my anime. It's pretty good, huh? Yeah, I've I've seen your anime. It's not even I've a euphemism, my... guys. Okay, it's not a euphemism. It's pretty good. Yeah. But anyway, now that you have arrived, Brazil, we were just talking about how we could make raids hard and how it's impossible because the visual noise will just crash everyone's computers and just DDoS everyone if you no. have too many mechanics. You don't think so? Okay, why not? <laughs> See, this is tricky because for nearly everyone, raids are already hard. I'm pretty sure that when the devs made Spirit Veil, vale, they never, uh, they probably never thought that five people would be able to do that, Veil vale Guardian, let alone three. Which is, like, beyond impressive. And Goku's saying, like, I think we could do it with two people. Like, what? What? But, like, uh, you see, like... And then you have probably at least 90% of the player base that can't even, you know, get past the trash on the way to Veil Guardian. So, what do you do? Like, they would have to specifically design encounters for, like, three guilds. Salt, Snow Crows, and QT. It's the <laughs> other one that people know about doesn't count. Anyways. Like, I don't know that that's something that they're going to do, realistically. They're probably going to add some, like, maybe harder achievements next time around, especially if it's just, like, a one-wing raid. I would anticipate some pretty difficult achievements for that. But, I mean, I think they're still going to be able to be achieved by... I don't know, most people that are able to raid. I mean, yeah. worst case, it's going to be an occasion for people to sell achievements. Like, I've heard that there is also this uh, this major issue right now of, uh, of like, too many people who have only experienced raids through buying because they can't be us doing it or because they're too bad or because it's easier to buy it. Like, this is going to be a good occasion if you have some pretty difficult achievements. Hmm. Is there is there an achievement that you could make so challenging that it wouldn't be sellable? I mean, the, the, and it, it, because even even if the, how how would that even work there? Because you can even you can sell stuff if you you could do it with ten people and just kick someone and then add the buyer in and they just get the achievement. They they would have to add some sort of flag probably where you have to be on the boss's platform and within a certain range of the boss and doing damage to the boss in a particular interval to where if you don't hit any of those flags, kind of like jumping puzzle checkpoints, like it just doesn't count for you. Mm. So sellers or buyers would actually have to participate instead of just sitting underneath a cannon platform at Sabatha or just like not doing anything at Gorsaval, etc. Yeah. So, I don't know. Like Brazil, I mean... 
this this is a, a pretty good idea and obviously we are in need of uh, of some new mechanic but like I, I don't think this is this is the right thing to go for because it is like too it's it's too much about like jumping around and not actually pulling out a rotation taking care of the team paying attention to rest like no one's arguing about the need for a plan your plan is just stupid and won't work did you just quote Ascalonian catacombs <laughs> yes <laughs> Nice role play. I tried. Yeah. I, I think it is quite unlikely that we're going to see any um, additional game stuff allocated just for the kind of extreme, this, the even more extreme end of raiding, because raiding is already, you know, it's already worthy of being downvoted on Reddit, right? So, I mean, if it's if it's already getting downvoted, do they want, do they want it to get downvoted even more? By just no, adding all this QT, other stuff to it. QT and Snow Crows will always get upvoted on Reddit because they're not really a source of public drama. Behind the scenes, it happens. Yeah. <laughs> nice. But, yeah, but yeah, you're like, you, you think of true. guilds like DNT who may as well have like tattooed hashtag first across their foreheads. Like stuff <laughs> like that, that, that won't get upvoted. I'm not going to get upvoted because I'm sitting here calling QT a dog toy on stream and a carrot, etc. So, like, and I, I'm also vocal about just hating Reddit in general. I think it's a stupid website. But, like, Sam is a nice guy. He doesn't say anything outrageous. Like, Goku just kind of, like, trolls casually sometimes. And it's usually pretty funny. But, yeah, Goku's a fun guy. Just yeah. like I mean, he's French. He has that very specific type of humor. Just, just be like everyone and say that his music taste is pretty horrible. But then again, we like it because it's the only me living memory we have of Purple Miku. Like yeah. quick Purple Miku, a thought for you. Pretty much. Rest in peace. Yeah. I I think I think in the public eye, Snow Crows and QT are in a pretty good spot, and I think that's good. We need good guilds to be in a position like that. Because wow. I would say, arguably, Snowcrows and QT are probably the best two guilds in the game. Whoa. And I'm pretty sure that Snowcrows is a lot better than people give them credit, because they just don't really make a lot of videos. Uh, until now. Like, show what they can do. Yeah, until uh, just out of nowhere. Oh, look, there's a trio of Hill Guardian. <laughs> oh, he was a pretty good killer, that's true. Yeah. Took him 18 minutes, though. Well, come on. Yeah. I mean, how long did it take us on 10 healing tips? Yeah, exactly. Right? It exactly. I, yeah. I said this earlier. Again, we're getting some weird deja vu yeah. here. It took us 30 minutes or so, didn't it? So, I mean, we still I win. To, right? I, I have to apologize again to Kat. She's mad at me for not going to sleep. Oh. Because I'm sick. Whatever. Brazil called the I mean, disease. Sorry. I mean, as you said, though, nothing is better than 10 healing tempest, VG. Yeah. yeah. Correct. I don't. Just, I don't see how you, you can't really. beat him. Uh, yeah, I agree. I don't see how you get any better than that. And eventually, we will do every single boss with it, and we will just prove that it's just optimal comp. Honestly, it's actually pretty fun to watch. No joke. I watched the entire video once. Like, I mean, it's pretty sad, and I just watched like a forty-minute video. But I don't know. It just caught me. You just, I couldn't stop. Yeah. I just I mean, wanted, to, wanted you, to see our perfect also, mechanics. You know, it's perfectly executed you mechanics. Can also... <laughs> have a different approach to it like the stuff that i do for example when i see that a new video by teapot is out especially when it's about like raiding with healing tempest or stuff like this i just i just usually you know like when i'm about to get to bed i put my phone like by my pillow and i put the video on and then after watching like a few minutes i just feel the sleep coming in slowly and slowly and i pretty much drop and i'm dead it's intense it honestly is intense like man. last yeah. night Last night was ridiculous. I took double the dosage of the sleeping pills I'm supposed to take. And I was watching a Sue Lightning video, and man, I just fell asleep. I was in a great mood. So, you know. I mean, that, that may not have been a good yeah. idea. No, it was a good idea. Yeah, it was a good it, idea. You can Sarah also watch Quill my Power Engineer rotation if yeah. you want to fall asleep. It's pretty good. Yeah, run around in They're circles. Rotating. Every They're time you run around, camera. it's like counting counting a sheep. You know, you just run around. Yeah. <laughs> Zach yeah. goes to sleep with a teapot too. Come on, come, Zach, come on, dude. <laughs> That's you're, not, very gay. you're not supposed to tell anyone about that, man. Come on, that was our little secret, dude. Come on. <laughs> oh yes, he's easy. Oh god. Yeah, that was such a, yeah. That's when you saw on Quest, that it's terrifying. Just the, the sudden burst of noise. Just 
<laughs> just, oh my god. It gives me a heart attack every time. Soon I'll be dead as a result of it. A bit like Brazil. Uh, but, <laughs> yeah. I think there is, unfortunately, not a lot of hope for truly challenging... Well, I don't know. It already is truly challenging, right? Raids are already like, challenging enough, but I don't think we're going to see anything more I'm, than what I'm gonna we can be honest. Have. I think it's both a very good idea and a very bad idea to add something that's actually really hard to the game. Because, on one hand, and I'm only going to name two situations, there are probably a lot more. On one hand, you're going to have people that really want it, and they're going to try and get better, and they might actually achieve it. Some guild may come out of nowhere that does an achievement that was literally just designed for QT to do or something. And they're going to be proud, they're going to have a title, whatever. So, other problem with that is that, you know, people are going to get an ego. You know, you're going to have that guy joining a pug group that says, I have this title, I'm better than you, and, you know, just nonsense like that. You're going to have elitism, I mean, that's always going to happen, in literally anything. You're going to have someone with a level 100 Charizard who's just convinced he's the best player that's ever played Pokemon. And you just can't change his mind. I don't think that's and... necessarily linked, though, because you know I've, uh, the QT guy is really friendly. They're always going around in pugs. You see them on. You can see the names in community team speak all the time. You know they like sure. to kind of. I don't know what they're doing there. It's kind of to to, to hone no, their no, skills, no, no, no. carry the plebs, and uh, observe the, the the magical strategies they find there and see what happens. I I think people that are actually good for the most part, who are actually really good don't really feel the need to tell everyone about it because they can just upload a video of a trio veil guardian and that accomplishment speaks for itself goku's not going around telling everybody how good he is and how much better he is than them at least as far as i know he might be but like then you have guilds full of morons uh, and like Brobo's former guild ES, I, I guess he left, I don't know. But you have just like guilds that they probably could speed run COF Path 1 back in the day with four warriors and a Mesmer, and they just think they can do anything because of that, and they're just convinced they're better than everyone. And there are, there are a couple guilds out there like that. I'm not going to particularly name and shame the rest of them, although it'd be very easy to do. But like... Elitis elitism comes when you're at the point of where you can do stuff other people can't and you're pretty good and then you become aware of that. And whenever you become aware to the point where you're like, yeah, I don't really care, like, whatever, I'm good, like, then that's when it goes away. So, I don't know. I've, uh, I kind of think that's a bit of a non-complaint, though. I mean, it's, it's, it's just inevitable, isn't it? I don't, I don't think yeah, it's... no, exactly. It's I don't an inevitability. The, I don't think achievements to... will make it worse, though. I don't know. I just, I... They, mm. they have to calculate no. whether or not they want that. I mean, achievements are going to create more of a uh, of achievements between, like, some parts of the community. Like, if we, if we try to take a look at what we've had before, a solid example of an achievement that was considered by quite a bit of the player base to be unreachable was the uh is it the dying light or what name was it like from liadri the concealer the blazing light, the blazing light. Yeah, there yeah. you go like that achievement was actually very easy you could see some people do it on pretty much any class there have been a lot of guides on youtube but it required too much coordination for the average Guild Wars 2 player. And as such, you could see a certain uproar on the forums of people saying, hey, you are locking a reward that we might want, which was the mini and the title, of course, behind that uh, the achievement. And a lot of people were not fine with that. They, they wanted to have the reward some other way. They wanted to find a way to have it. And kept pestering the devs until the devs just said, nah, just do your achievement. If you're not able to do your achievement normally, practice some more. But still, in the end, the the situation would be exactly the same if we were to have a particularly hard achievement right now. Either people would be buying it, getting carried or something, or they would just start raging on Reddit, the forums, like, why are you putting this out of my reach? Why can't I have it? Why can't I play how I want? Etc. Etc. Why do you make new content for raiders when we are not having enough content ourselves? Like, this is... Mm. 
the most classic approach you can find on Reddit. And this is exactly why our internet is in a tough position where they can't afford to make any harsh decision or they will like displease part of the player base. Like it's either they make Raiders happy or they make everyone else unhappy because yeah, let's hate on Raiders because it's easier to blame the draw, like the content draw. I mean, in general, I think rates as we have them now are in a good spot as well in terms of difficulty. I think they're not like super hard, but then like not too easy either for like most people. But like, I guess in the future, it would be. I mean, I would welcome it. Like, if you have something like that would, you know, as I said earlier, already challenge you a bit more, like maybe a different game mode, but. Well, I'm not sure if that's going to happen in the future. Mm. I also think it would be, like, in the future rates, like, I think just, just like, more good mechanics, like, like fights like Vale Guardian, I really like it, because, like, you're forced to have, like, uh, you have uh, condition classes or and power classes at the same time. You have to kind of split from your group for people have to go to the green circle under normal circumstances and stuff, and I, like, I really hope that we get like fights like this in future rates, to be honest. Mm. It's just like the, the difficulty itself is okay, -ish, I guess. Just like the fight needs to have good mechanics itself, to be honest. No, I completely agree with that. And I think that's something that um, I don't think many people were a big fan of this in Wing 3, right? Because Escort, you know, whatever, it's, it's, an, it's an event. But then on Keep Construct, you have this kind of big chunk of downtime in the, in the middle of the fight, just kind of, oh. I guess we can't even damage the boss. We just run around in a circle and collect orbs. Well, I mean, I guess this is fun, all right? And then you go on to Zara, and then you have... <laughs> you have these epic opportunities just to wreck yourself and just completely demolish the run if you fail gliding. It's just, why is this here? You know, I mean, it's cool, right? It is cool. You know, you've got the gliding, you've got the... You go into island to island, there's giant constructs everywhere, but it's just... Why, why is there the capability that you can just fall off and just ruin the entire run? And then again, there's some other things that... Uh, the, you know, obviously, if your group DPS is really high, the fight just doesn't really work properly anymore, right? And you just end up dying to the... Because you trigger too many special attacks too fast, or just light up the zone too fast, and then there's no way you can really tank it properly, and you just die uh, as a result of that. And it's just, there, there are just some problems with stuff in Wing 3, and hopefully they move away from that sort of thing. Uh, because, I don't know. Zara is just... Is this a troll boss? I mean, I don't even want... I don't even want to... Think about how many times we actually wipe just for no reason other than we failed guardian, uh, failed guardian, failed gliding. Uh, it's just, it feels bad, man. It's horrible. I, I mean, really this like is Zero a lot. this is technically the essence of raids. Like, I'm sorry for cutting you, Brazil, but that's the essence of raids. You are like trying to have ten people in your team or less. For some people, obviously six, three, whatever. You're trying to have 10 people in your team that are going to be able on their own to manage their mechanics. Like, you want them to be able to do their rotation. You want them to be able to not be too tunnel visioned. You want them to pay attention to the rest of the team. You want them to be able to press the buttons when it matters most, which is, for example, the space bar and not dying like a piece of shit by just falling down. You want them not to jump off the edge, etc. Like, the raids were built with that idea that everyone needs to pay attention. You can afford to lose one person two people, but more than that, you're going to have a severe impact and everyone's going to like panic and it's going to fuck up pretty much. But this is this is like the essence of raids and it should be that way. Like Sarah, in my opinion, really shows what Arnon had tried to make as a challenge for the players. Everyone has to pay attention. I think this is well important for future raids that people have their own responsibility in a fight. They actually have to watch for their like own gameplay and mistakes and might not get carried by the group if they do like a mistake or something like i mean if you fake lightning etc then you just dead like no one can get you up anymore and i think that's cool as well to have mechanics like this in future rates mm. you're just like on your own you know that's interesting actually like i think i've, I've been persuaded away from my opinion actually because i do think that personal responsibility is something that really should be emphasized in raids I guess I think it's it's really comical. I mean, I don't. I mean, obviously everyone here watches my stream. Okay, I mean, let's let's just be honest here. Everyone watches my stream, the best rating stream, and it, it is it is quite amusing that everything can look you know perfectly fine on on uh, on wing one a lot of the time, and you get to Sabatha, 
bit of a clown fiesta. But then when you get to wing two is, is where shit really starts to go down. Uh, especially on Matthias, obviously. Because uh, then people actually have to do things. And you can you can just see, you can just see what's going wrong here. And especially on Matthias, I call it the, you know, the Matthias test, guys. If a person dies and the fight becomes easier, you can probably imagine that this is someone who is, who is maybe getting carried a little bit. Uh, and, I don't know. I think personal responsibility is definitely good. I agree with you guys. It's high IQ on this tea time today, guys. High IQ. Like, yeah. the, the thing about Matthias, in my opinion, is when you say that when you lose someone, the fight suddenly becomes easier. It's it's not necessarily that they are trash. Like they could have been a good player that died stupidly to a mechanic. Like he got Kamehameha, and then sadly he was in the uh, the storm cloud or some shit. But what what makes the fight easier is that. As long as the person you lost isn't the healer, you just have one less person soaking heals, and then the rest gets healed more. And since Matthias has a lot of that pressure, like you have the storm cloud, you have the ghost, you have patches, you have a lot of ambient damage around you that you need to pay attention to. The fact that the heals are going to be like for a reduced amount of targets, so better heals for everyone, actually means that it's going to be easier. It's not necessarily that you like got rid of something you were carrying or someone you were carrying. At least in my opinion. Maybe I'm too pessimistic then. I think no, too. That this is too much, right? <laughs> well, I mean, you can just kind of go the QT route and just deliberately try and kill people with the circles, right? I don't know. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. Just make the fight easier. I mean, that, you know, is low manning Matthias even impressive? Less people easier, right? Simple. I mean, all I, you have to I worry have about question. is the CC, bro. Okay, what's the question? I have, I have a question well, for QT. Hello? Hi. Who made your video intro, the 3D one? Uh, like a friend of mine, I guess, yeah. You want to okay. have the name? No, I was just curious. Okay. I was wondering if it was someone in the guild. No, he isn't in the guild. Okay. I wish we would have someone in the guild that could actually do stuff like this, but unfortunately yeah, I know. not. I, I wish there was someone in the guild somewhere that could do stuff like that. Nope, they're all trash at everything. <laughs> Had everything. Mm -hmm. Wow. Like to be fair, if you want to have some uh, some intros and chat covers and shit design, you might as well try to talk uh, with Vance and join some VVV guild because they have these amazing chat covers with a lot of effects, weird like stars and hearts and shit, and their main characters with like twenty legendaries on one character because just you need to stack the eggs and shit. They should get into War Justice for Brazil. If you want that? No. Oh. See, the point was that that stuff I do. And QT doesn't have one. He wants to be added to QT. <laughs> like, is this is this the moment where Brazil is gonna leave salt for QT? No. Is this like the the drama of the night? I don't uh, think I'm is... good enough to be in QT. <sighs> you can Ooh. try your luck. Wow. Yeah. You can try luck. So that okay. So guys, we just learned that joining QT is all about the lottery. Like, you just submit your application, you get a random number, <laughs> and then they just roll for it a few times with some dices, and then... That's true, it's maybe, literally 50-50. Uh, yeah? It's 50-50, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's true. He's right. My God. Oh, shit, man. That, I, mean, I don't think is... I'm good enough. I think I have the knowledge, but not the mechanics, but I'm training someone who is going to be good enough. I have a student. I, yeah? I think you know who you're talking about. Yeah. Yes. It's uh, the, the result of that's going to be entertaining, actually. I mean, uh, we it, will see. Yeah, I mean, it's risky business. The the uh, if he can survive me, he can survive anyone in this community. <laughs> <laughs> that might be true as well, well. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Brazil is well known as a toxic, delusional elitist. So you can take that's that. Correct. You can you can certainly be able to survive QT. No problem. I have to ask Zach too. Zach, what did you think of my German that I sent you? Since my voice is. Oh, I think you may have muted yourself there, Brazil, by accident. Yeah, we can't hear Brazil anymore, guys. Like, I mean, oh. he tried to go German and. Yeah, like, it just didn't work. Teapot deciding to mute the rest of Europe because, yeah. like, you know, he's not leaving Brexit well. I, I can't even. I can't take European voices anymore, guys. I'm sorry. I just. Disgusting. I mean, like, Brazil's still muted. Yeah, Brazil, yeah. can you fix yourself? Oh. No. Oh. Okay, he's back. Yeah, he's, he's back. back. We're good. Right. I mean, did you did you finish your statement, or did you accidentally mute yourself halfway through? I don't know. I was fine. Brobo's gonna be good. Yeah. Oh wow. There we go. It is revealed. Yep. 
Oh, yeah, that Rubio. thing everyone already knew that, though. I don't know. Exposed. See, there's a, there's a uh, bet exposed. with Brobo right now yeah. that he's not going to be toxic for a week, and he's going to win. It, no, I don't think he is. <laughs> he is. <laughs> I'm not sure if it's possible. I think Brobo can't he go is. a week. I mean, honestly, Brobo has actually become really fucking toxic. He's, he's, you know, he's won already. He's already won? Yes. Uh, the, I mean, vote of confidence in favor of Brobo. I mean, that's... Yeah, Brazil is confident. I mean, what else do you need, right? I don't know. I think we should. It turn turns it. out that I'm correct about a whole lot of stuff. Uh, yeah. You know, that Minstrel one time Chrono? I said Minstrel's Chrono yeah. was really good. <laughs> oh boy, here we go again. I like Minstrel oh, Chrono. I mean, I don't think Minstrel Chrono is necessarily a bad build. Like, I think I mean it could work out in pucks and stuff. I mean, you don't get less quickness or anything with the build, and you actually. Kind of support the team, I guess, with your heels and stuff. It's not too bad. But I wish Pucks and uh, Mesmers and Pucks could give quickness in general. But they don't fail of the build. I think they just fail of the rotation. Yeah. Or the class mechanic in, in general. Yeah. yeah. I've, I've gotten to the point where I can use every single skill in Continuum Split. Wow. And yeah, other people is, uh, fail to dream. even... Other people fail to even use, like, Well of Action... Like, they just continuum split, and then they just kind of, that's it. Oh, I've seen people, they don't even have well of action. Oh, on yeah, I've, I've seen people with, like, the other two wells that I don't even know what they are. Like, well, yeah, like, precognition, once, you need it for Trio Veil Guardian. That's Boom. the only one I know. I don't yeah. even know what the last one's called. Calamity. It's the one that okay, does a big yes. nuke after it finishes. Well... I mean, in fairness, I, I have actually fucked up back. sometimes. I have taken Calamity instead of um, Recall sometimes, because they do actually look quite similar, so that could be a mistake they're making there. Uh, well, the I icon is fairly similar. Precognition is also pretty good in Fractals. I mean, like, you don't really need the extra alacrity, to be honest. Mm. I think Precognition is a good choice in Fractals. Yeah. Some juicy Aegis. You know what's a better choice in Fractals? What? For, for Necros yeah, and for the Necromancer. Necros. Five like necros. necros. Five Necros. Yeah. Six, maybe, even. Try to cheese one person. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Worked in Guild Wars 1. Just gotta yeah. have to figure out how to do it in this game. <laughs> I mean, you could have loads of minions in Guild Wars 1, too. Although, mm, yeah, you could have a massive amount of minions. And they, and Death Nova was, a lot, was insane as well. Well, uh, I, don't even, I don't even know where I was even going with whatever I was saying. What were we even talking about? I've forgotten. I think I've got dementia, guys. Oh, God. Uh, but anyway, I, I think let's 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 have a let's have a, an interesting interesting talk about about balance. Yeah. See, right, hater, hater. Do, do you do you think let's 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 because I know what Brazil's gonna say, but because he hate he hates Druid, but hater. Do you think there are any outstanding balance problems with the game? Because I know I, I think we've we've spoken about this um, a few times through various ways that you have com obviously completely legitimate means of not breaking terms of service whatsoever. Uh, ways of determining how much DPS is actually happening uh, within fights, and I think it's actually not as the disparity is not as high as people think it is. Would that be what correct in saying that? What do you mean? The the actual um, kind of difference in DPS between various professions is not really as high as you as you would certainly expect, at least. Uh, yeah, yeah, it is. No, it's not. Uh, 600k DPS on Tempest on Keep Construct. Oh, uh, to to be fair, Keepman's Rock is a special case in here, like because you just have this yeah. short window where you burst him. It's like yeah. fifty seconds. It fits Ellie very well, but mm. I think in general, for like normal fights, the the balance is in a pretty good spot right now. All the classes yeah. do about the same damage. To be honest, I mean Ellie is always it stands out a bit. It's true, but it's not like super far away. I think that's good like this, and yeah, I mean. I wish some classes like Engineer could get some more buffs, to be honest, in the future, but if not, I mean, like, it's still fine, to be honest. Mm. But, like, the balance right now is pretty good, in my uh, opinion. Engineer yeah. needs to be the highest DPS class because of how hard it is to pull everything off, but that can't happen because of PvP. Well, I'm, well I'm... that's why we need, like, a split, to be honest. Yeah, some yes, sort of split. I think it's really important, actually, because... It's 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 really stupid in my opinion if you nerf something in PvP or change something and then it just gets like destroyed in PvE as well. I don't know. 
That shouldn't happen. Yeah. All three game modes need their own balance, and durability runes need to be removed. Yeah. Uh, I think, I mean, but do you not think that, that perhaps instead of actually directly changing the skills, they could make encounters where these professions really shine? Uh, I don't really know much about Condi Engie, but could there be a fight designed such that Condi Engie is just... You want this, it's easy mode with Condi Engie, or there's, there's something that Condition Engineer can really bring to the table that no other class can, and for this particular encounter, it really shines as a glorious That's example of greatness. That's kind of what we had before uh, when the uh, slick shoes weren't nerfed yet at yeah, Crucible. Exactly. Just because Condi Engineer had slightly higher damage in the end than Power Engineer, that's the reason why it was actually chosen over Power, and it was mostly taken for the CC. Thing is, uh, if you want to have encounters where every class is going to shine, you're also going to like go against one of the ideas that are in the net that anyone can play whatever yep. class they want, and that you can make stuff work with whatever classes you have. Like for example, you've you've seen these people who replace their druids with healing tempests. You've seen these people that swap the Ellies out to replace with guardians and thieves. Like you can make the encounters work that way, and if you have classes that truly outshine the rest at some specific encounters, that, that would just like break also the flow of the raids. Like people will want mm. to relog at these encounters, you're gonna have downtime. It's not gonna be fun for anyone, to be fair. Yeah, I I'm not I'm not but what about stuff like Necromancer on Matthias, right? If you if you bring a uh, Necromancer for each of your groups in Matthias, it just yeah. makes the encounter a, a whole lot easier because of the condition yeah, measurement. And that's something that only the Necromancer can really bring to the table with plague No, it. It's not. Well to a certain Resident extent, it Gen is. 2. Yeah, with with Malix, right? But yep. um, I think some people would argue that Malix is not a particularly good thing to take. They're wrong. Whereas the Necromancer doesn't really give up anything by taking Plague Sin. And in fact, it's probably a DPS increase as well because the conditions, whether well, you have Death Magic anyway, can just be put on the boss for even more amazing damage with the, you know, it will Deathly Swarm and stuff like that. Uh, so I, I don't think it's actually a bad thing to design um, encounters that give a, an advantage to various professions. I mean, Gorsival, right? And, and the Elementalist, mm -hmm. even though it's actual, it wasn't even taken for its DPS on stuff like the you know the 420, 420 on the time I left Gorsival, they still uh, there was still an Elementalist presence just to help out with the orb click because it has that twelve hundred range and almost all the DPS is at twelve hundred range. Well, in fact, all of it is, I guess, except for fire overload. Uh, so it's, that it has that thing that not a lot of other professions can really bring to the table, and that's just something in, inherent in the design of the encounter. And I think that is kind of a way you can balance the game without without actually changing anything with regards to the professions and stuff like that. More, I, yeah, I think it's good for a diversity in general, like fights like VG or Sabata, where like boss bosses like just more vulnerable to condition damage. I think it's really good to have it on stuff like this. It just helps the diversity. Mm. On some bad for Cardi, for example, it's just mm. like, takes additional opinion, condition damage. No, it's it's Carda. He's in my German. opinion, if, if some people wanted to uh, to really have fights where conditions were made more relevant, like for example, enemies taking very increased damage from conditions, the first step to doing that, from Iron and standpoint, not saying mine, but Iron and would be to actually nerf Epidemic, because the way the skill works now, if you actually have a boss that takes very increased damage from conditions, and that also would happen to have some adds. You could just literally break it by using that skill twice, like just bouncing endlessly. Like, Epidemic, the way it is right now, makes it that Condis are already very strong in fights with either a lot of adds or just even one or two adds that you can bounce on. If you really want to go that way with conditions, you're going to have to change Epidemic, you're going to have to change the way some other stuff works as well. Like, you can't just buff conditions and have the same stuff as it is right now, or you're going to induce, like, a game-breaking mechanic, sort of. Well, yeah, that's it true. wouldn't be good I mean, for the balance. I just took conditions as an example. I mean, in general, yeah. you want to yeah, just have course. fights, like, that classes can outshine other classes there, maybe by a bit. But yeah, I mean, it's true. Epidemic is really strong right now. That is that's true. From mm -hmm. what I understand, it doesn't work correctly because I think what it's supposed to do is copy the current duration that is 
of the condition that's on the boss, and it's supposed to use the Necro's condition damage. And I'm pretty sure it just uses stats from just different places at some sort of order that I'm not quite sure. Well, I, so, I, I heard that it, it will... It will. It doesn't really prioritize stacks in order of their actual value, so it will end up copying some worthless three-second stack of bleeding from no, I don't know no, the, no, 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 the no. druid trait or something like that. You know, then that's 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 possible. But like, yeah, I guess that actually makes sense. Um, because like, if you copy warrior warrior burns, then like it's pretty noticeable. And if you copy tempest burns, it's pretty noticeable but sometimes like they kind of work the same it's it's a weird skill and i don't i'm not really sure the interaction but i'm pretty sure it doesn't work correctly um also i think what they're going to do whenever they fix it is they're going to put they're going to have it cause some sort of unique buff to where something that was affected by epidemic can't be affected by it like, it can't be hurt by the conditions on it, or it can't be affected by the actual skill for the duration of the buff. And it'll probably just match up with the Epidemic cooldown, so you can't, like, spread it around infinitely. So you can just that bounce once. You get one bounce. Yeah. Well, no, you get no bounces. No bounces? You just hit Epidemic, and then if the target was hit by Epidemic, it can't be affected by Epidemic. Mm-hmm. Mm. So, like, a debuff on the target itself, like on the target yes. of the first epidemic. Exactly. Like playing tag, for example, you can't tag the one that has already tagged yeah, I, So yeah. now we have the confirmation that Brazil is bringing some childhood the, game the mechanics childhood into games Guild Wars 2. Guild, that, I mean, yeah, that's boy. perfect, right? It's supposed to be a casual, friendly game. So they bring yeah, tag into the I game. I think people are going to feel right at home. We need to ship Brazil to Seattle right now. Yeah. To their internet headquarters. We're on to something. I, I mean, I, I would actually extend that to just everyone in Seoul. Actually, I think we'd make a great dev team. That would be what <laughs> a good number of slaves for Arenanet to use to make items for the gem store. I mean, it's a win-win for everyone here, and they can just give me they can just give me the uh, extra gems they make from the uh, gem store items. Sounds good to me. Yeah. Uh, I mean, okay, right now, let, let's. I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure Brazil will have some fun here. Look, I'm gonna cheer you up, Brazil. Why don't you shit talk Druid for us? <laughs> uh, Grace of the Land needs to basically be deleted. <laughs> Glyph of oh, Empowerment. I'm, needs I'm gonna have double... to against that, Brazil. <laughs> All right, well, you're wrong. Sorry. <laughs> they, need to, they need to double the cooldown on Glyph of Empowerment, but increase the bonus. I think Glyph of bonus. Empowerment is not too strong. I think Glyph of Empowerment is. I think it's 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 be right now. Don't, don't touch my baby. <laughs> it used to be 15%. What's the cooldown on it now? It's 10%. Like 20 seconds? I know it, but what's the cooldown on it now? 20 seconds? It's 20 and traded. Yeah. All right. So it needs to be 15%. It needs to be 15% and needs a 40 second cooldown. <gasps> no. 40 seconds? Grace of the Land needs no. to be 1% per stack. No. Yep. I mean, I, I agree. Don't, Grace don't of the Land is really away. strong. Grace of the just just yeah, Grace of the Land then, alone uh, invalidates every other healer, and then when you stack on Spotter, Frost Spirit, Sun Spirit, and Glyph of Empowerment, it is literally the only healer worth taking. But mm. but Druid has less DPS than the rest, so the role the Druid was made for was for buffing and healing, and he is doing that role quite fine. Just like for example, you wouldn't imagine. A raid group without a chrono because you want the quickness because you want the alacrity however however nerfed it got you want it so you can't just break the druid right like this if you want it to still have some sort of relevancy no it up. needs to be just as relevant as the other healers whenever like chronomancer as soon as they said what it was able to do, it was just like everyone immediately knew it was going to be irreplaceable in every single situation. Like you still take it in a three-man Veil vale Guardian because it just like it, it it is just so good. And I will say that it's so good that they can never make another Mesmer support spec. They just have to make DPS specs going forward because if they make something better than Chronomancer. Like for support, like offensive support, like that's just actual power creep. Like that, that is actual power creep. 
I don't really think the game has any power creep right now. Yeah. But, like, I don't know. Uh, the, the thing about uh, the, the druid the druid stuff is, though, is that, yeah, you, you can go with druid and you have that offensive option, but you you also have the, you know, the, the polar opposite of that, right? You have the healing tempest, which does put out considerably more healing, but it just doesn't do any damage, right? I mean, right. The, the water staff auto attack, if you really consider what's actually happening there, it's, it's honestly a broken ability, right? If, with, with you, if you're stacking up your healing modifiers and all your healing power. The the amount of healing that Tempest puts out is kind of absurd. Uh, and that's not really something that the druid can do. So it, it's just a different role. Uh, and I don't know, I, I don't think I don't agree with nerfing Glyph of Empowerment. That's come on, that's just bullying. I, I think you could nerf the if you're gonna nerf anything, nerf the um uh, the damage modifier, but I think nerfing the cooldown is, is not too great because, you know, you also use it to get yourself some Astral Force as well, so I think altering the flow of Astral Force it has, it I mean, has you more... Do it uh, for, yeah, you, you do it for Astral Force, for mm, Grace of the Land yeah. as well, you yeah, do it for the, the trait, yeah. like, Condic Lens with the traits, like, you do it for a lot of stuff for the Blind as well, like, you, you just, you can't change the cooldowns of the Glyph, like, I mean, friendly reminder that the Elite Glyph doesn't even have that long of a cooldown, they are not meant to be high cooldown abilities, like, they weren't and designed... And make it 5%. That makes me sad as well. Oh, it oh. Needs the, the thing, happen. okay, but the thing is, I uh, think empowerment, hmm. to be fair, is in a good spot. Like I checked the up times in some groups and stuff, and it's not even that high as you would think. It's hmm. like about like thirty percent uptime only. I mean, I don't know. Same with Craze of the Line. To be honest, you give it like a lot of stacks by just like going avatar and stuff, but in the end, like you would still have like around two to three stacks on average, more like two. Hmm. Well, depending on yeah, the food as well, I guess. Still, like ten percent. Yeah. Over, so, so, suppose overall druid is giving everyone a ten percent damage modifier. It's significantly higher than that. Mm. Well, I mean, frost spirit also exists. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And spotter. Yeah, Spotter's yeah. like seven percent I mean, crit chance. Frost spirit. Frost spirit is really awkward. Like, come on. Like, I mean, if you're if you're doing, uh, I guess, I guess, hater, you haven't. On it in QT, it's another guy that does it. But when you're like practicing your rotations with uh, Frost Spirit, it's it's super awkward. Yeah, that's true. Because like you you just grind the Frost Spirit RNG at some I mean, point. Well, I mean, I wouldn't say you grind for Frost Spirit RNG to be honest, but like in certain spots, it can like increase your DPS. Like you can proc it on like a meteor shower and stuff, which will do like end up more damage, and you're just proccing on an auto attack or something. But I think grinding for Frost Bear on she is a bit too much to say, to be honest. It's it, not like it's super weird. Yeah, it's a bit extreme. I mean, you re really want to get that I mean, golem to die faster, so you know? I, like, I won't change your DPS by That's significant. Yeah. or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it can, it can make some numbers quite cool, to be fair. Like, I mean, it was, uh, it was post, post Tele Nerf, I think, uh, when I was visiting a guildie, he was like, half drunk and doing rotations and at some point he managed somehow on early to hit an opening burst of 61k dps over the first million hp of the golem or some shit i was like dude you're shitting me and then i checked his computer and he actually got that it's like that's that's where the rng is but that's purely for benchmarking to be fair uh, i've seen the, brobo get yeah. nearly 60k on his elementalist yeah. He probably cheated. He probably he probably used <laughs> he the uh, the QT way, like waited for it to be night time and using night sigils and <laughs> no. I'm just I'm just gonna stop. <laughs> Wait, do you really? We, we use no. night sigils. No. You do. Do you wow. use night sigils? Of course not. I mean, <laughs> <All right>. oh, <laughs> I'll leave you for a second. That's that's not cool. You're not doing this. Man. I almost got you there. Uh, you're safe. It's fine. <laughs> Pranked and caught him good. Uh, Okay, yeah, that, you know that's that's obviously an, a pretty extreme example, I suppose. But um, but I mean, e even if okay, so okay, right? They they do the nerfs to Druid, okay? The the, the nerfs happen. Grace of the Land is what Brazil. You want what do you want Grace of the Land to be? One percent. One percent. Grace of the Land is one percent. Okay. Per stack. Okay, right. It's been reduced to one percent per stack. Glyph of Increase Empowerment. Increase the duration of the stacks. Uh, uh, but wait, okay, fine. Increase the duration of the stacks a little bit. Glyph of Empowerment has been, uh, you know, nerfed 5%. a little bit. What? 5%, 6%, 8%, whatever. We I think you'd still take Druid anyway. 
Yeah, you probably would. Right? So, what what does what does bashing poor old druid accomplish then? I mean, yeah, it's a good question. We'd have to see. We'd have to actually have it happen. Because see what other people take. If, I mean, if you if you bring okay, let's say Healing Tempest is you know probably the other mainstream competitor to the druid, I would suppose. Yeah. And then you've got Ventari Rev, which is. Uh, even it's more bad. niche because it, it's not bad it's it's, it's, just, it's the it, healing output on ventari rev is just it is the highest out of everything it is it's nuts but like the level of skill you have to have to play that build correctly like it's it's insane and i can't even do it because like i've just given up because i realize what it takes it's ridiculous Okay, so yeah, so you've got those other two things, right? But they yeah. they fulfill different roles to the druid. The druid is still going to be the offensive healer. It's still going to be the, the the choice that you're going to see in all of the uh, speed runs, right? Probably, you so, you still yeah, use like, it. You provide uh, heals and stuff and buff well, at the same you time. Could, yeah, I guess you could take healer chrono and healer rev, and then just play a DPS druid that doesn't worry about like healing at all. Other than putting down grace of the land, but that's kind of what that's kind of what happens already, yeah, I right? Know. I mean, that's, that's what happens already. <laughs> yeah, that, that's what already yeah. happens. I mean, you know, they, they they'll spend minimum time in avatar and, and get back yeah. to doing the sick DPS rotations immediately afterwards. I mean, you know, druid it's DPS just, is obviously, you know, especially Condi druid is obviously providing a decent chunk of damage as well. Yeah, it's not bad. Yeah. So, I mean, even then, you still would only use a healing tempest if you want a safe kill. And that's why I don't really think that uh, the other healers are really in a bad spot as such, because your, your, your healing tempest, you know, something like Staff Healing Tempest, or even the Auromancer variant, I really, I'm a big fan of the Auromancer variant, you can really support a group and make fights easier with builds like that. I mean, yeah, you do sacrifice like, <clears throat> a good chunk of DPS, but you can really, you get some more DPS uptime, you know, and as we all know, it's all about DPS uptime. Uh, <clears throat> thanks, Nemesis. Actually, um, I like making parallels to previous situations. I'm going to make a parallel to a previous situation once again from what you've uh, you've just said, Teapot. Like Teapot just said, you can go for a safer kill if you take uh, Healing Tempest, for example. And actually, this is something that we have seen in Dungeon Meta before. Like, if you remember, back around release when people were bad and it kept going on for the people that remained bad afterwards, you would take, for example, an AH Guardian, shit like this, like... It actually made the runs easier for these people, smoother as well, because they didn't die, not smoother in the sense that it was faster, but smoother in the sense that there weren't any wives, there, weren't, there wasn't any downtime, there weren't some people having to waypoint and rerun shit. It just, it just carried it, and we are having a very similar situation right now. We have either you're going to want a very safe kill, you're going to want to play it like in a sure way that you can't possibly fuck it up, you're going to take your Healing Tempest, you're going to play Double Chrono, you're going to play maybe Double Necro uh, in some encounters just to make sure that you pull the conditions away. You're just going to play the safest that you want. Or you can like play it the uh, the hard way and take every profession in every spot for exactly what they bring. And to make sure that you're going to get actually the fastest skill and the smoothest skill in the sense of, efficient, of efficiency, and not in the sense of it being extremely easy and safe. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't really have anything to add to that. I just that's yeah. that that is the correct statement to make. I think. I don't know. Thanks. But I don't know why should we still kill Druid though, Brazil? After all that, that was some compelling argumentation there. Because it's too much. Can't we just leave Druid alone? Did Druid no. do anything wrong? It's too Please, much. Please, Brazil. Please, Brazil. Come on. I'll buy you some cookies. Just leave Druid alone. I mean, if I had my way. I just make corner stacking and fractals impossible, and I just I, I would just buff Druid to the moon, and I'd add instabilities then, that literally I, I would add in no 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 here here we go yes yes instability numb hands you can't use melee weapons. <laughs> what Ooh. sounds good? What sounds fun? <laughs> So you, have, but, but but I mean, you can just melee on. I mean, this is all what? fine. Instability. That Instability. Has an axe. Heightened That's reflexes. A range weapon. No, 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 no. Instability. Heightened ranges. No, heightened, heightened reflexes. The further you are away from an enemy, you do more damage. And all ranged weapons have a decreased cooldown on their skills. 
perfect. Beautiful. Why? Why? Instability avalanche. If you have ice bow on your bar, you insta death. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, if, if you use an that's, ice that's bow ability, it also is cast on you. If you use a conjure weapon, the weapon is also cast on you as well. Instability, watchful eyes. If you exploit, you, you just kick from the fractal. <laughs> there we go. But what, what this, if you argue? If you argue, it's just clever use of game mechanics. What the hell is this spam? Seriously. Instability, bro. final say. You can't argue. <laughs> <laughs> you can well. talk yourselves. I mean, okay, and there was actually a really good point in chat. I'd be interested to see how you, how you would answer this, Brazil. I mean, could okay. you not make the same argument about Phalanx Strength Warrior? I mean, you're never really going to get rid no, of Warrior, No, you absolutely right? can. You absolutely can make the same argument about that. Yeah. And uh, I actually hate Warrior a whole lot because of how many offensive buffs that it has personally and how much it brings to everyone else and how survivable it is at the same time. Because when you really think about it, Warrior and Necromancer survive pretty much about equally. Like, you can just not ever die for any reason on either of those classes. Power, and Power Necro and Power Warrior. And Condi PS Warrior and Condi Necro are both very good condition damage classes. Problem is that you have banners, you have Power Allies, or Burning Arrows, depending... And, like, tons of personal damage modification. Like, why would you ever take... Why, why would you not ever have one? Like, why, why would you never take... Why, why would you ever take anything other than that class if you need to buff yourself offensively? And, like, also just for doing damage. Like, Power Necro DPS, it's realistic to assume with every single possible buff that you're going to average, like, 25k DPS. And that's just absolute trash. That's just that's just that's just bad. Yeah. And like I mean PS Warrior does the same damage, but it has like quadruple the offensive buffing, if not more, and the same survivability. Isn't the, I think you've un, you've kind of shown that there's some weird stuff going on with Gravedigger with how the variance on the, the damage The variation in Gravedigger is so large that I think the skill is actually functioning incorrectly. Because you can hit a 28k grave digger, and then right after you can hit a 37k. Like I've actually seen that in my recordings. That is, that's like an error to such a degree that like that's like, like I don't even know what to compare that to. That's insane. And like the aftercast on grave digger is like I, the only thing that I think has a comparably bad aftercast is like short bow thief. <laughs> and so, like, it's just bad. Like, mm. it's just, it's just bad. Well, with regards to Reaper, that I think that's kind of an inherent flaw within the specialization, because that's what it's supposed to be like. The Reaper is the slow, you know, deadly blow guy that is is you can see all of his attacks coming. He bops you on the head with the great with the Grave Digger, and if they if they make it fast, that doesn't really make any sense, right? Because the Reaper is supposed to be all slow. And, and just like big attacks, fix Grave Digger's functionality and make it do even more. Like just increase the damage by forty percent or something, yeah. and then maybe you can do thirty k DPS and be just as competitive as other stuff. I mean, honestly, I can I can actually see that happening because I don't know. It, it right now the in the PvP community, I don't see a lot of of Grave Digger. You know, well, uh, no, Great Sword Necro is running about. Well, yeah, I'm sure. You, I mean, I've, 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 seen I've seen a few as many, well, right? Yeah, plenty of Power Reapers, and it's just like, okay, uh, let me just permanently blind you, and then let me just take your stability away from your Death Shroud. Let me just fear you and daze you, and you can literally not do anything to me on Thief. That's what happens to Power Necros. They're just like you just. You hard counter everything they do, and it's pretty hard to lose to them. No, oh, so that's why they could buff it in PV PVE as well, or just buff it across the board, because it's it's not particularly overlapping. Grave Digger is unaffected by blind. Huh? Is it not? Nice. No, I didn't even no, know. So you're basically no, it, channeling it, no, your inner dredge. That's yeah, become weird. a dredge. Learn you yeah. something every day. 
new specialization. Brobo, what the fuck is this shit? Can dude? you can you like wipe Brobo's chat, please? Like, Brobo, you can actually stop clear this. a oh very specific God. person. Just All right, right click on. him. Should he wipe be disposed of? Should we dispose of him? Yeah, just just kick okay. Brobo. What is he saying? Clean his chat. Doesn't work okay. for me. He has been disposed. Like of. he wants you to smile. He's been yeah. asking for you to smile yeah. for ages. Really? Like hater, it's so simple. You know, you just put your yeah. fingers like this and. No, you can do it, do it too, I man. Do it. You, I can do an anime smile. You want to see? Oh, sure. Oh, hell yeah. Go ahead, Brazil. <laughs> oh. What is anime about it? That, that's what that's <laughs> the poses. That's the poses the characters do. I'm, I'm ashamed to even know that. Uh, I, oh, Hater is the I most pure. Know. Yeah. <laughs> He's the most pure out of all of us. Oh, uh, yeah. Brobo, you have been purged. You have been cleansed. It has finally happened. But don't worry. You can. Yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah. I don't know, my laptop is just so bad, the chat won't even load. Oh, that's not good. Well, that's please, bad. please stop the spam, my laptop is overheating. Mm. Guys, stop it. <laughs> so, okay, let's kind of, if we can bring this kind of into a nice, nice warm globule of, of knowledge. So, do you think that um, uh, it's a problem? Uh, hater that we have these kind of mainstays of the meta. You're always going to have chronomancers. You're pretty much always going to have warriors. I mean, you know, druids to a certain extent they are right replaceable by other variants, but there are these things that you don't see groups without chronomancers, and you it's not not often to see uh, groups without warriors. Uh, and do you think that's a problem, or is is that something that can be fixed by say adding new elite specializations that can kind of have similar roles? I mean, I think it's actually good that we that it's like this. I mean, you have classes that fulfill certain roles and for example chronomancer is in a really good spot is really unique you can give quickness alacrity and i think that's actually really important for the class itself as well because i mean i have no idea what you would do for a new specialization but if you would just nerf or remove quickness whatever like you wouldn't bring chronomancer anymore like there's no other reason to bring chronomancer or warrior for the might or quickness i think it's really good there but some classes have these unique, mm. unique buffs. Okay, that's interesting. Actually, I uh, think it's it's all about like a good mix. You have like classes with unique buffs, and then again you have like classes that are just just there for dealing DPS. And I think that's it's a pretty good split right now. All right. Well, would you think that there w it w it would be healthy to have a, a, a say a boss or maybe just you know one or two encounters where it would not be advantageous to say bring a chronomancer or something like that, where it, it's actually not really worth it? Could there even be such an encounter within the context of Guild Wars Two, or are you always going to have that juicy quickness? Because I mean, honestly, for me, at this point, the game is unplayable without quickness. Um, you know. Well, that's true. <laughs> I think I can't really. I mean, they could add like mechanics we have already, like on Slavosaur when the Slopling said you, mm. your boons convert into conditions or something. You could have something similar like this. Well, I don't know. Not sure. I couldn't imagine playing without quickness again. To be honest. Yeah. I mean, exactly. A boss that gets that gets you killed like if you hit it too hard and too fast. <laughs> yeah, it actually is. It's terrible. Uh, I mean, that would be the only way, right? You know, if you kill the boss too fast, you actually lose. It's a, it's a prank. You know, if if there's too much time left on the enrage timer, it just kills you. Brutal. Well, you guys have that, that problem funny. with Zera. Yeah. You do too oh, much. Oh yeah, Xerah is, yeah. uh, is kind of weird in my opinion. Yeah, I don't know. I really that fight's very relaxing for me. How? I don't know. What? Because I can focus on one thing. And also notice other stuff that's going on. Or watch yeah. anime meanwhile. I think it's pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Uh, exposed. Tank tanking, exposed. Tanking Zera is probably the most relaxing thing for me in this whole game. It's just like, it's just my zen. Like, I just get into it and do it. I like it. Yeah. And I, then I, I find watch it really other fun people well. who like, they just. I can't. Um, I can't watch other Chronomancers at Zera for the most part. It just kills me. Why not? Because it's like they miss one skill in their rotation, and then they just use it outside of the rotation, and then suddenly they're just using everything. Like whenever it's up, and then there's not a rotation anymore, and then they and just use time warp outside of continuum split, and then by the end of it, it's like they don't have any legs. They're just flopping around. It's bad. Yeah, it's, 
it's the best when you you see your containment split is coming up in two seconds, but all your wells are like on cooldown for like twenty seconds. You just yeah, that's that's an uninstall to be honest. Yeah, I think it's... yeah, just reset, create the chrono again. You have to delete the chrono monster and just start again. Hope you have tomes mm -hmm. to level it. And yeah, you without can... tomes, level and you oh, exploring oh. maps. I think yeah, 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 good. yeah. So before you can raid again, just as punishment for fucking irritation, you have to just do 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 map completion again to one hundred percent. That sounds good, yeah. Yeah, that'll be that'll be pretty brutal, actually. I mean, a, a, a worthy punishment. Well, I mean, or you can just do the strategy where you just stand in the same place and you don't have to do anything as as Mezron on Zera. I mean, that's well, good yeah, too. but as we said before already, if you deal like too much DPS or something, it, it, can it get just it just doesn't pretty, work. Pretty, yeah. pretty fucked up. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> you can't uh, you can't even use distortion to survive the. Uh, the the devastating attack of Zara. Yeah, Special I think we need perma distortion for this. Yeah, you're would, gonna need to would, bring loads that would of be something They should add to the game. Permanent distortion. Yeah. Blurred frenzy should be distortion again. Oh. Mm. They should bring back the old well that gives distortion yeah, 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 yeah. recognition. Just mm -hmm. change it again. Yeah, just make everyone invulnerable permanently. That seems good. For for mesmers, the new meta. Yep. Just invuln through everything. Is minstrel meta on every class now? Yep. You'll be seeing the guides be updated shortly. The berserker gear is just... it's over. It's gonna be minstrel minstrel gear on every class with monk runes. Just like my ears, they're over. Your ears are over? I mean, your berserker... Your ears are over, yeah, as a follower of Nemesis, your time has come. Just yeah. stop yeah. trying See, to I'm, the game. See, I'm, I'm wearing my reaper's hood today. Role playing is the role player is real, boy. Role playing is Power Reaper. Where's your? Then what the sword? fuck are we role playing as? Like, what are the other three of us? Oh, I, I have a great sword. Just judge us, except... judge us, Brazil. Like, you've got this. You started. What are we role playing as? What judge am you? I? What do you mean? What am I role playing as? Like, you're the Reaper. What am I today? French. Where is the... <laughs> right in the feelings. That would be a new good class as well. I think. Get it running French. away? What? <laughs> uh, no, not yet. Well, I mean, what what profession? What professions are we, Brazil? I don't know. I think teapot is like a base elementalist, not even a tempest. Yeah. <laughs> Old matter. Yeah. I'm kind of confused about a hater. I think you're just probably like an aerodome NPC. You just kind of like <laughs> bobble around. <laughs> that sounds Sam, good to me. Sam that... probably works at the bank in Divinity's Reach. <laughs> I mean that that yeah yeah never mind that's I'll take that I'll take. Yeah, that. I mean that's pretty good, right? Better this than something else. Yeah. Well, Brobo is actually whispering me, begging for mod back. What is this shit? That, that I have is... to find my great sword. I don't know where that... I put it. Your great sword? Have you got Twilight oh, in real yeah. life? My great sword. Okay, he's got his great sword. <laughs> it's sunrise. Nice. It's gold. <laughs> no, shadow was a grave digger. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. well, here we go. This is gonna be a good gif. This is gonna be good. Zach, I hope you're ready to record this. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, this is what we live for. Mm. Uh, that was pretty good. Yeah. Good. yeah. Yeah. What did that one like crit it. for? What did that one hit for? At least 200k. Uh, 200k. 19k. 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 Oh, that's, oh. Pretty, that's pretty good though. That's pretty good, that's pretty good as well. Yeah. Like, I mean, this is a solo situation, right? You're unbuffed, playing mm. by yourself. And 19k is good. Like Brazil. Let's let's yeah. not belittle his DPS, guys. Yeah. Yeah. Let's yeah. not be like this. Let's not hate on Necro. Yeah, it's because like, Brazil didn't have any grace to land on him. Really so. rad, but I'm not gonna hate on you. Yeah, no grace of the land, no glyph of empowerment. Druids are banned, so the grave digger didn't do any damage. It's a bit unfortunate. Yeah, I don't know. I don't even know what we're even talking about again. Once again, Who I've distracted cares? myself. What should we talk yeah, about? Yeah, but this is, this is fun though. Yeah. Isn't it? Is that wait? Is the Marty that said the cringe? Is that the Marty from ES? Not anymore. Because. Let me Not tell anymore, you, friend, yeah. uh, you probably don't want to be saying cringe if you were from ES. <laughs> well, he's not there anymore. 
It's All pretty right. rude, though. I mean, yeah, he decided to follow his boyfriend as he got kicked oh. from the ice. <laughs> just played, played that way. Was I not supposed to say this? I'm... Boyfriend. I don't know. Like, boyfriend. I mean, that's, that's okay, right? Yeah, like, everyone knows about our relationship. It's 2016. It's, yeah. two, it's 2016. And, and, and America still current, doesn't yeah. accept gay marriage. It's, tw it's 2K16, like, come on, yeah. Uh, How do you feel about that? It depends. On, in Texas, they don't like it. They don't they like don't a lot like of things. things in Texas. They like Donald Trump a lot. Yeah, but, you know, whatever. No. This isn't a political tea time. No. Th that's a very rare type of tea time. It doesn't happen. It is. Yeah. We, we can have a... Should um, do it once. Yeah, we can have a... And when... Right when uh, we're in Later in November, we can have an election special. <laughs> Just during the election night, have a tea yeah. time, I guess. Yeah. Mm. Hell no. Bonus tea that's time. That's a bad idea. No, I think it's like, a, or, it's a great are idea. You, are you going to disguise yourself as Trump? Like, you do, like, all the Swedish girls, you know, you put on that weird, like, suntan cream to become orange. No, and, like, I, I don't, <laughs> I don't your like hair. Hair. Or just, just take, actually, you take Hater's hair and you stick it in no. your head. Actually, you yes, and... he's pretty close. It's almost but as good as I, Trump's I hair, like, isn't it? I don't like blonde hair. Blonde hair is, is oh, I delete. unattractive to me. Oh, even on a photo? Ooh, interesting. Yeah. So you wow. kind of be redeemed. I like I like dark I mean, hair. My yeah. hair are not as blonde as Donald Trump's. Donald Trump's one. Donald so. Trump's hair isn't even blonde. Oh, it's like I don't even know. It's like it's like it's bad. It looks like a pe it looks like peach fuzz. Like it's just <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it is a bit. Unusual. I don't even think it's like I don't even know that it's real, honestly. But whatever. It's yeah. been a meme for I mean, a long he's time. Happy with it, like it's fine, I guess. Is a good meme. I'm be I'm being pestered to mention Commander's Revenant. By Why? Because Shadow Nin is is famous with insult for using I don't his his understand. first his first ascended set was a Commander's heavy set for his Revenant. I mean, alright. I take that back. I understand. Because it's good on Malik's Rev. For the resistance. Oh, 100% boon duration than resistance, right? Mm-hmm. But, I mean, even with the boon duration, can you really stack up a lot of a lot of stuff? Resistance. Yeah, you can. And you, wouldn't, you have to, wouldn't you have to perfectly time it with the Chronomancer as well to make sure it gets shared everywhere? Uh, not necessarily, because it just needs to last for the duration of whatever you're avoiding. I suppose. So, like, a Slothosaur shake, like, you can just negate that. Yeah, and in, in fact, that was what we used uh, in yeah. Salt when we were killing it for the first time. We said, ah, oh, can't be bothered to dodge. Didn't know about the distortion stuff or the invulnerabilities. Just get some, uh, what's it, what's it, is it called pain absorption on Rev? Boom. All those condies so, are gone. Pain absorption, just right of the Great Dwarf, man. Like, I mean, that's one thing that I know because that's, like, when I play Revenant, I use that skill every time I can because it's part of the roleplay, but... Obviously, that's the skill you're thinking of, I think. The yeah. elite, when you were in uh, Angelix. It's 50% right? reduction, it's pretty good. Yeah, it is a 50% reduction, it's pretty dank, yeah. Yeah. It's pretty, pretty good. Pretty good on KC? Yes. If you're collecting orbs, isn't exactly. it? Exactly, it is. Very handy. Very handy indeed. I don't know. Even that is not enough for some pug ribs, you know? It's just... That is true. Yeah, doesn't really matter. I, I really like pug strategies as well. I, I that's why I kind of enjoy going into pugs just to see what they try and do because they always do really weird shit. I don't know where they pick it up from either. It's just always starting at blue on Veil Guardian. I mean, how did they learn this, and why is it now agreed that everyone does this? And on Keep Construct, they all don't stay and damage the boss. They always want to run away when he starts doing his pizza slice attack. They always just run away so, and stand there. It's just weird. Kids Whereas, the other nice. day. The yeah, other day it's, it's we had... weird triangle no, no, attack no, 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 no. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. Okay, oh and 721. What is this shit with 721? I have a Seriously. story I have to tell. You guys ready? No, the thing yeah. about 721 is you can take an extra DPS class because you just run strength runes and it's easy. So you only need one warrior. Yeah. Okay. Anyways, okay. so the other day I was pugging uh, with some friends and we got a pug warrior. And he was an idiot all through the escort. And like when he first joined the group, he said, So by the way, I'm taking a longbow for keep construct. 
And I said, no, you're not. And he said, yeah, it's so I can damage it when he's doing the pizza. And I said, you're not taking a longbow. And I said, like, I, I actually got kind of mad at him. And I was like, why do you even think longbow is better power damage than rifle at this point? Like, what what's wrong? And so he just started, like, memeing and trolling all through the escort. And I finally just kicked him at the end of it because I got sick of him. But, like, pugs just pick up weird stuff and they think it's good. See, this is, this is the thing. This is the thing. If you think about something for... 10 seconds, you probably, like, that's enough effort to probably get it. But most people just think about something for like three seconds. And so they don't get those extra seven seconds where it clicks with them. Mm. So it does, it does raise kind of an, an interesting thing about getting people into raids. Because like, there are, you know, there are lots, plenty of resources to help you, you know, decide how exactly you're going to play your profession, what exactly you're supposed to be doing while. You're playing professional, obviously. A great, great website, guys. Just uh, qtfy.engine.com. Okay, you know, obviously, just a great website uh, for all these these needs, such as like that. But you still have people who come into raids, and you know, you know, just going about my business, you know, play, playing a little bit of Chrono, you know. And suddenly, I realize, huh, I don't have aggro. It's because the necromancer has two thousand two hundred toughness. Okay, and you know, that's great. You know, that, I, what what do you do? How does how does this happen? It, it's just why do people think? That this kind of gear is good oh, to help me survive, of course. Uh, but the, it does seem that some players do kind of slip. They slip through, slip through the cracks, and just end up going into raids with, you know, every signet warrior. And so, and I've seen this stuff. There's people who just try and do raids with only signets on warriors. It's, what, what are you doing? Um, and maybe we need something like in PvP because in PvP you now have the recommended builds. And maybe in PvE yeah. you need to say, hey. You're going into raids. Would you like to have some suggestions on what abilities you should use? The, the problem with that is that uh, you need to buy your gear in PvE or craft it or acquire it one way or the other. The thing is, in PvP, it is doable because pretty much everything is already in PvP. And if in the recommended build there is something that you don't have, you can just unlock it by spending five gold. In PvE, it's not the same. When you look at the costs for a proper set of ascended armor, you're looking at much more than what the regular guy can afford when he's going to be thinking, hey, I'm just going to get into the race and do my shit. Now, that, that, that can't work out. Or you need to do a very different method of acquisition or gear, like a complete tryout, or maybe you could you could like change the uh, the level up boost uh, in a different way. Like you use a level up boost and it actually gives you something else than soldiers, something that's more adapted to your class based on what's the current flavor of the month meta i mean whatever just like if, if you want to have it a certain way it's gonna have to be that way you can't just go into an instance and then the game prompts you and is like yeah you're gonna, just gonna choose the best gear you can go for like i mean the pro would be real and i would be the first one to get a pitchfork and be like fuck all of you i bought all my i mean like i crafted most of it i just got all of my ascent characters like fuck it if people can just get that template jump in the content and play it like hell no I, I I don't think there should be handing out free gear, but it could it could point you in the right direction, right? I mean, you can do okay. raids and exotic gear. You can do I it in green. You can do it in masterwork. You can, easy. End, you can end do it in masterwork. Yeah. But I also think a lot of people like she they don't even care. You know, they just want to go in, fight the boss. Like they don't want to like read anything about guides or boss mechanics or what. They just want to do it, and eventually they keep failing over and over again, and. They either go complain in the forums or they just like sub rating in general. Like the AC think, Spider Queen. I think some people's attitude is pretty bad. I think, yeah. Some people they don't even want to improve either. They just wanna they just wanna play their own build or whatever yeah. and just you know, just whatever. I kill this boss or not. Doesn't matter. If hey, I man, don't kill so... it bad content as well. Yeah, exactly. It's how if I can't kill it, how do I even get my loot? Yeah, um, I think that's a sad but true observation. There, there isn't that. Um, in Guild Wars Two, there is a bit of a lack of that uh, mental attitude to kind of want to get better, right? To, to I think that actively every game improve. Has it, though, to be honest, yeah, it's not like it was to you. It's, yeah, it's I think not, that's no, fair. Like it's not, it, not in general, every single but... game, no, in every single game, you have the people that are going to be competitive and the people that are not going to be. Like, for example, you can play Pokemon for the adventure. 
which is what some people do in Guild Wars 2. You can just like start the game, get your starter. It has a shitty nature, but you don't give a shit because it's your starter and you like it. And then just go and beat all the gym leaders because you just grinded the experience and that's the way it works. Like if you are higher level, you're just going to kill it, whatever. Or you can go like full competitive, uh, look at all the uh, individual values behind the attacks, think when I'm going to be my Pokemon like this, I'm going to be able to two shot with 99% chance anything that is in the current meta, I'm going to outspeed everything, whatever. Like the the competitive attitude is present in everything. And the, the one way to cure, like cure, sort of, the players in Gores 2, uh, like would be to accompany them into raids. Like, thing is, when you started the game back in the days, the first hard content you had were dungeons. Okay, then they added fractals. The fuck are you doing, Brazil? Okay. Spraying then they stuff added... in my mouth so my throat doesn't hurt. Easy. Okay. Okay, that's... Is yeah, that see, just... <clears throat> No, I'm and, not uh... European, so I didn't have to wait 20 <laughs> days to go to the doctor to get some. I just went and picked it up. Oops, whoops. Nope. No, doesn't work like way for, that way for me. Like France is superior, whatever. And uh, <laughs> Germany is in a good spot as well. I would say so. It's fine. Maybe Romania is not. All right. Not, <laughs> we, have to, <laughs> we have to stop. I can't. I'll 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 ruin all of you. And like he probably doesn't street. even know the names of half of the countries we just spoke about, guys. Come on, let's let's not take it too hard on him. But yeah, you anyways. assume I don't have an education. No, Thank I assume you. you have an American education, man. Yeah. Nothing against you. Just I have a very good education. <laughs> Did you went to a um, Christian school or some shit? Yes. There you go. So, uh, did God uh, create the dinosaurs, or were they alive? No, he's not real, that's the problem. Did God create the bazooka I, 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 I learned about the problem of evil when I was like 14 years old, and that was it for me. So... But then again, is it actually... Does it say much if you know a lot of other countries where they are or what they're called? Is it really, is it really education? You want to like, does it have to? No, it's just it's different? just being a mindless monkey. To be fair, you just learn <laughs> shit by heart. There is no reason to do that ever. Like whatever. Anyways, what are we? Let's go back to Gears. What I was saying yeah, is that a good idea. when you started back at release, you did the dungeons. You had the first pseudo holocaust experience then fractals came. You grinded your levels. There was the progression. Like if you wanted to go farther. You had to actually give a shit. Like you couldn't get to the old bogged level eighty just by thinking, yeah, I'm gonna like press one 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 and it's gonna work out. No. And at the moment when the players start, they're just thrown in the game with everything being available at once. So if they think, yeah, I want to try the raids, they're not gonna have necessarily done any other PV content before. They're gonna have subpar gear, subpar habits, subpar attitudes, subpar reflexes, like. They're not going to have gone through all of that. And it's much easier for a player that, even a returning player that has been there from before, because he did dungeons, he got his exotic gear. His exotic gear carried him through the first 10 fractals, and he got his ring, he went farther, farther, farther. He went up the levels in fractals, dropped his armor, geared himself, geared his ult, geared all his characters. He gets into raids, he already has it. He already has everything he needs to at least be at the point where the only thing he could have to fix would be the the gameplay only and like right now i think a lot of us when we read at the lfg when we look at the new pugs when we look at the people coming on reddit and saying hey i want to get into raids it's hard we're all looking at it with the experience that we have of having been players for so many years and we're not looking at it from the perspective of a guy who just bought the game and is like yeah well, i actually want to try the raids like hello this game is raids i want to do the raids i want to see if the game is worth the 50 euros i put in and then everyone is like Yo, dude, go back, go back to crafting, man. Like, get your armor, get your shit. Yeah, maybe. Uh, what's your um, what's your uh, attack points again, or whatever it is in other games? Like, what's what's your attack gear rating, whatever. Uh, whatever, dude. I never played any other MMO than yours too that much. Okay, so it's like, what's your gear rating you or whatever? Like Pokemon, though, didn't you? Yeah, I do play Pokemon. Yeah. Yeah. And Let I me tell you about it. my uh, skill link cloister with King's Rock. Yeah. Did you? Shell smash. Yes, sir. Do you go fuck yourself? Like you I got ruined. That, I got just... ruined by a cloister using yeah. shell smash like three days ago in comp, and I fucking hated it. And the, the fucking faggot had like you know, some other Pokemon's behind it. It was no harsh hell. words. Wow. I'm sorry. Yeah, see, words, I, I guy, ran, if, if I you're ran running, if you're running cloister with shell smash, it's like running condition damage guardian. You should just uninstall right now. Yeah. 
Right. I now. played. Yeah. I also played a Ferrothorn on the same team with Protect <gasps> and Substitute and something else. Did you I don't just remember. have any respect for yourself? What was it? It was Protect, Leech Seed, Substitute. It didn't have any offensive attacks. I can't That's recall okay. what the last one was. No, it was wow. good. I oh. never lost. But you just yes, have stuff but like that. And he just, it's just. Why would you play small? It's just... good. It's good. No, no. Let's just let's just go back to Gear Wars Two. Get the thoughts out of my head. No. All right. <sighs> so p- perhaps then, do you think there should be some more guidance to what kind of a a logical path through? Because I think ArenaNet kind of trying to do that with Bloom Hunger, right? The new revamped Bloom Hunger. Yes. By yes, yes, yes. Uh, they, so maybe they do want to move forward when they add some more. Uh, they add some more fractals, or they change a few, or something like that. They want to have that kind of pathway that you move through fractals. Now, there's obviously consistent ways to get ascended gear as well by doing the dailies and you know gathering the relics and stuff like that. Which then, I mean, obviously, Tekkit's workshop. He tells us you need ascended gear, so you need ascended gear. Um, you know, you go through the fractals into the raids, as opposed to right now where you have some people who are in the, you know rare carrying gear on their warriors and they just try and do raids you know, already so do you think that maybe then if there was some kind of additional structure to assist players into getting the, into the right content would that be better? I mean I think fractals could very easily be a stepping stone to raids and like make, make fractals actually get more difficult and have different mechanics as they level up and you see, four years later, they seem to have caught on to that. I mean, it only took them, what, like, they changed fractals like 34 times, I guess? So, I don't know. Like, I don't know why they ever thought it was a good idea for the Dredge Clown car to take 45 minutes at level 80. <laughs> that alone. But, I guess they did. Well, Who knows? And, you know that's another you know another good point by chat as well. You know they are they're also showing off the raid bosses in in the living story stuff. You got open yeah. world Veil Guardian that has kind of the same mechanics. It's got the blues don't teleport you in the green. The animations, the animations exactly, and yeah. attacks are the same, but they just do different stuff. Yeah, I think that's to more or less get people interested in the content to yeah. a certain extent. They'll see this, oh, you know, oh, and then say, hey, this is an, a, a raid boss. You you want to go fight the raid? And that kind of entices people in, and then they start playing the raid, and you know they're familiar with the animations already, so maybe they kind of vaguely know what to do. It's it's, it's almost like yeah. an easy mode, which is kind of something that um, I've advocated for, and a bunch of other people as well to kind of ease people in. And then, and of course, it does have rewards because in the open worlds you get the events, you get the fat loot and the good stuff. But um, I don't know. I think it's gonna be really, really interesting to see. Uh, how these developments continue to ease players into the the glorious content and challenging PvE content that is raids. Okay. Anyone have anything to say about that? <laughs> Sounds good. Sounds I good. good. Was oh. always right. Was uh, always right. right. Yeah, I am, right. I am always right. I mean, how many times? How many times do I see Minister Elementalist Chrono. Minstrel Chrono? And, I mean, this is the one that really fucking gets me. Zera, we picture the scene. We fuck up. We're too late. We res someone. What do they try and do? They try and glide to the last platform. At this point, I'm right up to the mic, just yelling at them. Glide to the middle, retards. They ignore me, and they die. Elementalist gets down. I say, dude, misform over. Doesn't do anything. Dies. I mean, come on. What is this? Why do people what not do listen to me? What do we learn from this? Kids yeah. just listen to Teapot. Exactly. Listen to me. I will. I will give you the advices. The advices you need for victory. If you okay. want to ra- learn raids, just whisper a mighty teapot. Exactly. Exactly. I definitely won't ignore you. It, well, I actually do try and reply to everyone. But the thing is, I have very high AFK uptime, so you, I might not actually read your message. Uh, but other than that, insider info. That's why I'm always right. Now you want to talk to Sam about that? He he makes all the money from insider trading. <laughs> Nope, nope, nope. Exposed. Nope, nope. There it's we go. It's all legit. It's all legit. Yeah. It's all legit. No, there's someone <laughs> hey, else no, you no, want no. to talk to for that. Yeah? I'm not going to name him. There's someone else. Probo? Yeah, we all know. We all know these people. <laughs> um, I have a video about that for some time. Like, sometime soon, a video where I'm going to, like, maybe call out names. Maybe not. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's going to be fun. It's going to yeah. be fun. Like, obviously, I'm going to tell the, the people I want to mention first so they can, like, pay me not to be blamed in public and shit. 
Master just like plan. Adblock does. <laughs> Adblock Plus. Why would you use that though? Yeah, you should be Disgusting. using Ublock Origin. Or maybe, maybe, you know, support your favorite content creators. Don't use Adblock at all. When ads stop being invasive, yeah. I'll do that. Right, I'm not even going to fault that, people for using ads. They're not that bad on YouTube, block right? On my stuff. They're not that bad on YouTube. Oh uh, yeah, they are actually. Uh, Whenever really? it literally takes up the whole like the borders to the page, like the entire white background is just an ad that's clickable, and they're animated ads, etc. It's pretty invasive. It's not autoplay this video that you can't turn off when you click on the website invasive, but it's pretty bad. So I don't know. No. I think that the Twitch ones are mildly cancerous. Because you can't I've skip never them. seen one, so I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But I mean well, if we can come and make it bring bring it back to fractals a bit. Didn't they okay. could they could I mean they've kind of also tried to do this, right? Some of the instabilities are to try and increase you know, people's awareness of things, right? Because now you've got to not stand on things with all the toxic trail bullshit. You've got the void bombs, so you have to run away from the team, much like a Sabatha, you know, a Sabatha thingy. Anti-stacking. Exactly. Yeah, but it's, it's called a mechanic. Too cynical, Brazil. Too cynical even for me. Ooh. Bit more spraying. Bit more spray action. Good. Yeah, a bit more spray. You know, I think some of the instabilities are probably aimed at trying to get people to react to things instead of it being really predictable, you know? Like, a giant a giant tentacle appears out of nowhere, or a rabbit just spawns. I'm which is kind of funny. I'm, I'm totally okay with that. With a giant tentacle? I think, yeah, it's a good mechanic, yeah. actually. That's yeah. fun. I, I do, I, yeah, I do find Same that funny. Like, uh, um, what's it called? The PvP thingy? The, the hammer? What's the map? What was it called? Skyhammer. Skyhammer? Skyhammer. Oh, that Skyhammer one, yeah. yeah. I was confused why that was it's pretty, there. That's pretty good, I think. I like it. Yeah. Also, yeah. like, the, the, the AoE. You drop after like a few seconds. Yeah, 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 yeah. It it forces you to pay more attention to the exactly. fight. Exactly. I think it's it's yeah. it's more interesting than you. Yeah. Hey, I I like the new instabilities actually. I think they're fun and it opens up. I mean, obviously, you know, you could simply get around the other instabilities. You know, boon thieves and and lethargy. I don't know. I think they were kind of annoying, right? And these ones I find are kind of less annoying, and you can just deal with them. There's a very easy way where you can just nullify them. Whereas before, it's, oh, I guess I can't dodge. I guess all my boons are gone. But then again, there was an aim with those. You know, you've got to be careful with your dodge. Yeah, to so delete randomly. stacking and, and good 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 compositions. Well, yeah. not exactly, though, because you could still use stuff like, you know, Chiromancers, Warriors, etc. It would still lead yeah, to really, really fast... Your group. Yeah, but it would still be very, very effective. Uh, it just means it's even better now. Without Boon Thieves. And especially with the change of the toughness as well. Power power is back on the menu, although it wasn't really off the menu. Yeah. Uh, like what I really doesn't don't like with the uh, the current fractals is um but it's something that I've hated since HOT came out. It's uh, the social awkwardness. Like as if we weren't all already like socially awkward enough. <coughs> like this this instability is literally trash like it disencourages people staying together for boon sharing it disencourages mm. people staying together to like restack might or something like you you would want to stay close to the person who is blasting a feed you want to stay close to the person who's going to give you a buff you would want to like play closer so you don't fuck up the uh, boss movement or anything and this instability is trash it requires you to artificially get your ar up which is actually just a gold sink in the end that our internet needed, but it really makes the game feel super stupid. Like, it could have been done differently, it could have just not been done and it would have been better, but this, the way it's made at the moment is just not fun at all. Mm. Oh, yeah, I think there is, um, there is a certain type of argument to that. Um... But I think it is, you can kind of play around it, because isn't the, the ring really small now? Don't you have to be standing right on top of people for it to affect you? There's a, there's a visible thingy that shows you how close you have to be in order to actually get the, the agony. So I don't think it's as bad as it, as it was. You can kind of play around it now. Yeah, I mean, I don't think it's super bad. Like, I think boon sharing stuff isn't too big of an issue, to be honest, mm. with the instability. But, um. I mean, that's true, though, it gets kind of annoying. Like in fights, like my terrain where a lot of movement is involved and stuff, like you, you just can't avoid running into other people. And in some bad cases, it actually might 
wipe you or just own people and it's, it's pretty bad but I think yeah. it's not the worst uh, instability either to be honest I, yeah. as I said I really like mechanics or instabilities where you just really need to focus more on the fight itself not like I mean you do DPS anyway like I think most people are able to do DPS somehow it just makes it more interesting when you have to pay attention for other stuff literally yeah. like just more be more aware of what's going on like yeah. you know. actually doing stuff in fights is pretty good it leads Self to entertainment yeah i mean why why else why else do you need to do things other than mechanics otherwise you can just stand still scepter auto attack on necro and just let the minions tank everything right i mean yeah you can also go like ranger longbow 1500 range and oh yeah i mean whatever oh yeah five necros which is yolo true fractals it's yep. good enough <laughs> It certainly is. Where's Brazil gone? Let's see, what's he on? Yeah, we've lost Brazil. Like I, I had to AFK twice to uh, let my cat out and let my cat back in, but I don't know. Brazil only has a sugar lighter, right? Yeah. Maybe yeah, he's got to dude. gone to repair his ears or something. I don't know. <laughs> they, they've they've suffered durability damage. They need to be reaffixed to his head. I don't know. Like he's too too close to us on this stream and uh, got some damage. Like the agony fucked up his ears. Oh yeah. Rip Brazil. We were we were too close together on the screen, so the social awkwardness got us. <laughs> That's true. He had to escape. Yeah. yeah. Run away. He got too many stacks of agony. He was just, his HP was just ticking down too fast. It was too much. But then again, he's Reaper. He can survive it. And yeah. Know. Just turn on Shroud. Good to go. What the fuck's going on with your chat, though, Teapot? Like, I have Juni tailing me to eat my cat on live stream. This is, <laughs> this is pretty disturbing. Eat your cat on cam, Sam, or no balls. I don't mean, I mean, honestly, this is it's my chat. Thing. You know, anything can happen in yeah. in this. Wait, what did what did random user? Oh, yeah, he linked this, yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, I've got some good clips for this channel, guys. You know, uh, there's some good, good quality clips. Nern. Good, good. Oh fuck you, Nern. Yeah. Like someone's making fun of me in your Wait, chat because I don't have HT on my alt accounts. I had the ice bow has a 25% damage buff. Is it going to be new method to run that instead of aftershock for 100% DPS uptime? Honestly, overload air is overrated anyway. Explain. Kelly is so. overrated. Just playing necros. Yeah, I mean, why would you? Why, why, I mean, ne Ellie just dies. It's only got 11k HP. Necro's got 20k HP. It's twice as good. Actually, to be honest, I don't even like Necro's and Fractals too much. I mean, well, I guess they're... Wow. Great. I mean, I guess you're just wrong, but that's cool, too. <laughs> I guess I'm wrong. <laughs> Brazil being harsh as usual. No, like, I mean, Hater is actually right on that one. I'm sorry, Brazil, but I'm going to be going against you once again. It's not that I don't like you, it's that I don't like your ideas. Oh, no, it's fine. <laughs> Hater, you could be wrong Hater is actually right on that one. Like, come on, no. Brazil. No, like, Necro in Fractals is retarded. Like, stacking Necros is stupid. It is stupid because it is stupidly easy. If you have... Yeah, that's answers, the point. Running retarded toughness traits and then one druid, you can just go through any fractal without any, any and all effort, encounters in the game without wiping, without actually having at one point to be like, "Hey, am I doing the shit right?" No, you just you just press all the buttons and it works. It is a tad longer. That's but it incorrect. Works. You auto attack and press epidemic. <laughs> It's even easier than you thought. Hey guys, I'm sorry. I'm I'm gonna have to ask the chat. This is this is the moment when I ask the chat. Can someone ship a rope fast to my place? I'm gonna <laughs> need it soon. <laughs> well, I think I really like engineers and fractals. To be honest, I think they're pretty op. Yeah, I um, like just stressing myself out to the point where I'm gonna you know like die of a heart attack instead of just auto attacking through easily. It's fun to play, though, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, Engineer's great in Fractals. I don't know. It's... I don't think you press super... I mean... I mean, you press some buttons to destroy, but... That's not, like... That's not super much, to be honest. It's high risk, high reward, you know? It's... You can you can but even do Fractals on Necros by skill-clicking with default keybinds. Well, I mean, I mean course... you can, you can skill-click and default keybind everything in this game. Like, I mean... Goku, for example, did record runs by skill clicking yeah, for close did. to two years. Like, come on. You can do anything by skill clicking. What you just have to skill click fast enough. Yeah. 
All right, I, I would actually that, argue. I would argue that you cannot play Chronomancer correctly in Skill Click. That's that's a challenge. Someone needs to do. Right? Yeah, I would actually like someone to. Well, someone Asian, maybe. Yeah, not yeah, European, yeah. not not yeah. American. Hey, I really don't think someone could do that. Like, if you can do Zera and play it correctly and Skill Click everything, then I'd like to see it because I, I don't think it's possible. It's possible with fast skill targeting. With so if you if you click and it immediately drops the well if you have to do it if you have yeah. slow skill so you, thing and I think it's notice how I said so correctly annoying. yeah because yeah. you're centering the well on your character at that point you're not putting it on the edge of your model and on the team so that's not correct you'd have to do some really funky positioning to make that work yeah also pretty sure by the time you click on continuance split and move on to your time warp or worlds half a continuance split is over already yeah. You, have to yeah, be you really can't. Fast. You can't cast really continuum fast. split inside of the time warp cast. Like, I mean, I I don't think it's. Oh, look, I really don't think it's. Possible. The architect says I can skill click and cast all skills in continuum. No, split. you can't. I mean, that's impressive, man. If you can do that, it's pretty good, man. Show show video proof, please. Yeah, video. We need video. We need the. We, we need, need video see the... proof, like yeah, just like at the time of Nemesis. We just need... everything that you say must be proven. By Open video. the combat log. Look at the numbers. Add them all up. Calculate the DPS manually. Easy. No. And then we found out that the combat log is actually wrong. The combat log is a lie. The combat yes. log is a lie. Are you telling me that my combat log reading DPS meter isn't a hundred percent accurate, Brazil? Is that what you're telling me? Yes. It's actually pretty good. I think it's quite accurate it for measuring healing. It would also seem that memory reading DPS meters are not accurate either. Wait, come again. It would also. I, I, didn't, I didn't hear that part. Like, uh, I'm just, I'm just. I said it would also seem that memory reading DPS meters are not accurate either. Mm -hmm. Does it not line up with what the golem says? Uh, after talking to quite a few people and seeing demonstrations, the meters are off by as much as like 3% of the percentage on the in-game health bar. And another thing that occurs like on the target golems, this is, this is actually very interesting. So on the golems in the training area, your DPS meter, like the meter in the combat log starts when you attack the golem. But memory readers start when the conditions are applied to the golem because they do like 300 DPS. So you have to like reload the DPS meter as you start the first hit and then it can be. It's, it, it's, it's like so bizarre because final damage done or like total damage done at the end of the kill or whatever is the same. But the DPS value, like the calculated value, is wrong compared to in-game. It's, it's really, really weird. And the percentage is wrong, too. But, like, that's just... That's stuff that I've consulted a lot of people on, and it's just bizarre. Like, the way the game does that. I mean, so, yeah. I don't know. You could just not what use Kiwi damaging said, conditions. Pretty much what Kiwi said, yeah. Yeah, Kiwi just, is right. Yeah, just don't use the, the the damaging ones, and then maybe that will fix it. I don't know. Well, no, you can like I think a lot of the meters that people use have the ability to be reloaded, so it just restarts the timer, and then it becomes considerably more accurate. But like the percentage is not the same. But does it yeah. matter if it's in if it's within a few percent? I think it doesn't really. It matter. does. It it does because if you do a grave digger. Whenever the meter says 50%, the actual percentage is like 52%, so the Gravedigger will get the cooldown. The in-game DPS meter also starts when you apply conditions, FYI. Uh, oh. it doesn't. That's interesting. No, it doesn't. It, it actually it doesn't. doesn't. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it doesn't. Oh. It, yeah. Whoever said that is very incorrect. I'm installed again. Oh, Fennec said it. What a surprise. <laughs> You're wrong again, Fennec. I don't can think you, can so. you guys stop I mean, picking mm, on Fennec? Sure. Like the, the poor guy actually has decent music taste among QT. Like, please. Just... <laughs> what about my music? My music not good. Nah, your music's listen. good, hater. Like, come on, yeah. yours in the is the only QT stream I have ever watched. 
That's good. Actually, Just watch actually, mine. Yeah. Don't yeah. watch the others. Well, I mean, yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. Cutie. Uh, Subi's so, so, yeah. me. So is definitely. Fennec is bad. Like, the, the moment like, <laughs> I'm the only one in left. your stream was when you were doing that uh, that trio tournament uh, for like DMT or something. And actually, uh, at some point, like you tried to jump in AC past the bridge to like cross color, and, and then you fell like three times and fell to the it ground. It was two though. times. Two. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Two. Sorry. My bad. I mean, but jumping. Third is try. Good hard. try. Third try. Third time is a charm. What yeah. Yeah. I mean, jumping is pretty hard though. Like. Yeah, I, I mean, it. this is once again we're back to the jumping puzzle the jumping, mechanics. Yeah, like, it, this is the proof that they're bad. Like even in dungeons, they're, they're bad. already it's too bad. hard. Yeah. Actually, too hard. Should remove them from the game. Yeah, it's actually a challenge. I mean, you know, every week the struggle begins on Gorsival. I try and get to the the jumping puzzle uh, button, and every week I just just fail basically. It's I'm not just... even trying anymore. I just yeah. I just AFK somewhere, and that's good enough. Yeah, it was. It, it's 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 rough, man. It's just I, I'm not sure if my ego can really take it that much more. I just keep failing, keep failing the jumping puzzle, and that's why it's good to have exploits for Twisted Castle. Because I mean, Twisted Castle is really entertaining to me because it, it now that everyone's got it figured out, it should be really easy, right? Because you just do the same thing every time, and it should be very very repeatable, but it's really not. And it, it feels like sometimes we just fail miserably over and over again on Twisted Castle, even though we're actually cheating. And using yep. the Mesmer portal bullshit to skip loads of stuff. We still die and fail. It's just... I can't deal with this. Jumping puzzles are too hard. They need to nerf it. It's harder than Zero. It's harder than Keep Construct. Even harder mm -hmm. than, uh, than than the Escort event. Obviously the hardest boss in the game. It's a, it's not creative content. Like it's it's a pole a pale excuse for a lack of content. It's like we didn't know what mechanics we wanted to put. We didn't want to design content that was actually interesting to do and hard to do so we made a jumping puzzle like they they actually got some stuff right uh, that we don't always think about when we talk about mechanics for example at matthias the icy patches that you can only get rid of with fire type damage like you you actually need to work around that for example like that's actually a clever mechanic like you have something you need to think of your comp and pretty much anyone can find a way to fit some burning damage one way or another like you just just have a druid take on you just have the revenant do it with um, the face it like you can just find a way to, around it but it's a clever mechanic it's something that's actually creative and requires you to think and use a skill meant to get rid of it this is actually what i would like to see in the next raid wing like they did say some new raid would come at some point or the other we had a lot of leaks on reddit we actually know that something is going on at our internet headquarters and this is the type of stuff i would like to see in the next raids that come on some some mechanics that are like accessible to everyone to every class like mechanics that you can do on nine classes and um something that is still like relevant enough and makes the fight harder if you don't do it properly, like for example, when when you realize that your pro group is shit and that you're pretty chill, that Matthias, you just want to kill yourself. And this is the type of mechanic I would like to see in the next raid wing. Hmm. Yeah. I think overall, um, a lot of the design philosophy in Wing Two is is really really good, right? Yeah. Um, Which is why you were first, like, sold first on that. One, yes. Because it was actually the good wing. Yeah. Yeah. So we got well first on the good wing. Easy. And but I mean, there it was neck. I mean, surely you disapprove though, because we basically just spam necros to victory. I don't know. <laughs> just added more necromancers, and, and the, the fight was easy. <laughs> I don't know. That's fine. What is this? Druid takes sun. That's why I said it. You cuck. Wow, that's pretty toxic. Yeah, I am pretty toxic when Perry starts like saying stuff to me because you know it's, it's just friendship you know it's like goku and dave they always say to each other that their music taste is trash like perry always tells me i'm trash and i always tell perry it's okay at least i'm not swiss german so that's fine yeah it's like as far as mechanics go is there anything from the third wing that you would actually like to see like improved in the next raid wing like I mean, I feel like the first two wings were the best ones mechanics-wise. Like, we had the, uh, the the colors, let's just call them the colors, at Veil Guardian. That was actually pretty good. Then, like, the other two encounters don't really strike me as being any, like, incredible or anything. Then we any have the environmental... Any encounters in the game. 
we have the environmental weapons at Trio. That's actually a nice try. Like it's it's something they could explore a tad more. Then we have at Matthias the uh, the actual environmental damage that you can like manage one way or the other. Like this is actually interesting, and this is what I want to see in the next raids. And meanwhile, the third wing really felt lacking on that end. Like mines, like hello, that's that's not even cool. Yeah. Everyone dies to it, especially Perry. Uh, then what else do you have? You have like Casey. Yeah, you need to push an orb around. Like, come on, guys. Was it because the Olympics were on at the time? Like, <laughs> come on. And yep. then, then you have Xera and like gliding around and and breaking crystals. Like, this is not this is not the type of creativity I was like shown in the first two wings. It it felt like it was a bit rushed and probably. Could have deserved a bit more love that I hope we're going to see in the next week. I think the, I mean, the, the, oh yeah, go ahead. No, go ahead. Okay. Well, I mean, I'm not a fan of Wing 3 either, to be honest. But I think some mechanics are, like the mechanics itself, not too bad. I think on Xera, if you get ported away, something like, like when the boss splits you from your group, I think something is, something like this is pretty cool. But I mean, I was kind of poorly executed in Wing 3, I think, and KC as well. They try to make you split from the boss, kind of, by like killing the chanters and like circles split around. But as I said, it's pretty poorly executed. You can just skip it, and I just hope they will avoid this in the next future raid. Hmm. I, I, I think, think they yeah. tried something in Wing Tree, but I just, it just didn't really work that well, I guess. Hmm. I think they could definitely explore a direction of having some more powerful ads because because right now the way ads work in in the raid wings except for keep construct is that you just pull them in and kill them instantly right uh, yeah. or, you, or, or you know they're very kind of trivial annoying things that you have to get rid of i mean i, I guess on zera i this is actually something i kind of dislike about zera is how unpredictable the, the ads can be because sometimes they just do absolutely nothing the ads are just worthless but another time two battle mages get buffed and they both cast their aoe spell at the same time and they just kill you instantly and you just go, oh, well, that, that was fun, right? Uh, but I think it would be good to have uh, some ads in fights that you actually have to say split away or split into different groups to actually deal with these ads. Uh, and they're, they're you know, really important. Because even on Keep Construct, it, in the event that you do do a strategy where you, you move uh, to keep the ads away from each other, they don't really do anything while they're there. They, they kind of bop you with their hammers, but they don't really do anything important, right? There will be no reason to have a, a specific person who can survive very effectively against the ad or you need to spread out and kill these things quickly or kill them at the same time or something like that uh because like, you know. for, for example what we've seen in the new bloom hunger fractal for example like it's it's something that is kind like it's an interesting mechanic like it's sort of environmental it sort of requires awareness it's kind of interesting like Guys, this is the time. We have a time window. We need to split out. Everyone does their shit. Everyone knows where they're going. Everyone knows what they're doing. And this is quite interesting. But of course, would have to be adapted to raise. Like maybe only half of the team having to do it and not everyone. But like, Arnett has shown that they care about this type of mechanics and that they're able to implement it in a way that's not too cancerous into the game. Like they actually made a change to the fact that you had that huge downtime as you kill the spirits. I mean, QT knows about that one more than, than anyone else because they actually like did a record for it. But... Didn't listen, yeah. sorry. It's it's okay, it's okay, Hater. I was just talking I just about QT. QT, QT, yeah, QT yeah, yeah, record. QT okay. yeah, record, was... that's right. That's good. <laughs> yeah. Go upload. Okay, I, was... <laughs> I, was, I was just talking about like the, the Bloom Hunger record because I was talking about Bloom Hunger actually Part having stretch, interesting interesting like mechanics like that new mechanic they added to the new Bloom Hunger Fractal, like split, get the orbs, bring them back. You have a time window for it. That's interesting. That's something which could be one of the many mechanics in the raids. Like it is interesting. It requires awareness. It requires the team to pay attention to what's going on. It requires this like choosing someone to do the stuff before, just like for example, you do at the mushrooms at Slothish or like your number one, two, three, four. Uh, that that would be the same shit. Like creative not necessarily interesting but just like it's it's gonna spark your attention when it happens you're gonna be like 
I need to react now. And that's that's the kind of thing that gets you motivated, like in the middle of your raid realm, because it's when you fall in the routine that it's not interesting anymore. It's when you're going to like go raiding and you're like, yeah, I'm just going to do my rotation for the mechanic. I just need to give a fuck twice during the encounter. Then, nah, like that's not the fun. And having something that wakes you up as you're playing is like what a game should truly be about in my opinion at least, and what we should have in the case of raids. Hmm. So do you perhaps think there should be a mo bit more uh, randomness then within the raids? So it, it the, the to a certain extent, the encounter is different every time. So you don't just do your DPS golem rotation every single time. Mm. Do you think you, you need to add a bit of... Mix it up a little bit? Yeah, n not necessarily. I'm, I'm not necessarily talking about randomness in the encounter because, for example, I do not like the randomness of the, uh, the last fractals. Like the, uh, the the fact that you get that random instant, like not random instant, even random mechanic from any other fractal that just mm. comes out of nowhere. Like usually, I don't find it fun. Like when I see a tentacle spawning right next to me, I'm not like, "Hey, that mechanic." <laughs> I'm more like, "Hey, go away." Like this is not this is not fun. However, having uh, having like something that sparks the reaction, like. Um, a mechanic that happens at a random time, not on a fixed timer, and that should be done by a specific person, but can also be backed up by someone else. That's the kind of stuff that like gets you going again in the middle of the run, and not just like you two are just going to do your rotation for the entire encounter because you are like off mechanics this time because you have these one or two persons in the raid group who are just going to like focus on DPS, like out of mechanics completely. Like they don't need to do it because there is already someone else covering for it and a little bit more randomness maybe who gets the mechanic and who has to actually react would provide more entertainment that way yeah and then brazil is like nodding his head like this i'm not exactly sure what he's doing but no i'm wiggling my legs and falling ah, asleep. okay okay isn't it like the afternoon for you I think like well, I also said. have an ear infection in both ears and my throat's messed up. So that is not good. What are you gonna say, hater? Oh like Sam said, like the little bit of randomness. I think it's not too bad, it just will spice more things up. And I think it's good to have. Yeah. Yep. I agree. But I, I yeah, I mean one up in chat, um, yeah, he, I, I agree with that as well. You don't want to make it too extreme. You don't want to make the fight unreasonable. Uh, you don't want to make it unreasonably random, such that it, it's just irritating. You know, I, I think that's definitely something that I need to be mindful of. But I, I think, I think having a little bit of randomness to kind of change stuff up. I mean, uh, again, you, you did kind of see that in in Wing Three, right? With with oh, again with KC, it's always, it always comes back to KC, guys. But it turns out that that's kind of just annoying, right? Uh, but because if you get the the circles, you, you can't effectively skip the mechanic. I mean, even the fact that you can skip it is kind of a bit silly. But just disregarding that, you can't really properly skip the mechanic in the uh, just before the last burn phase because there's, there's not enough time because he's too busy attaching it, attaching himself to the ceiling or something. Uh, so I mean, that would be something to kind of watch out for, I guess. Delete the phantasm mechanic, I guess, or make it consistent. Or you could have Delete a specific Casey. pattern. Delete KC, but but how how do you get more insights? And you can only get eight, eight insights to ping every week. I don't that's know. that's fine. I'd rather have eight insights a week than fighting KC. <laughs> that's Not a pretty big bold statement. Wow. What do you prefer? Do you prefer KC or escort? Escort. Wow. No joke. No joke. I don't no. even mind escort too much if it goes smoothly. It doesn't even take too much time. Like I don't know. I mean. It, it's like, better than trio. I mean, it's bad in the end, like for sure, but not as bad as I, KC, in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, hmm. Not sure about. Uh, not sure. I mean, about... I mean, I'm not a fan of both fights. Like, but I mean, if I would have to pick, I'd rather do escort. That's interesting. I kind of like. I. I, 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 I kind of like escort. I don't actually. like any of the events. I think escort is a good idea. Um. But I think the kind of inherent, uh, the, the way it works means it is, it's never really a challenge, right? And it really didn't take people long to beat it, even for the first time. Because you just kind of figure out what you have to do. And then to a certain extent, there's no real time limit on it. And, and you can go really, really slowly and just eventually get to the end. 
It does have quite, uh, you know, one of the one of the harder achievements tied to it, right? I mean, you, you can't you can't fuck around if you want to do it in what is it eight minutes? Uh, it's it's pretty pretty doable, but again, you know, you could you, there is no, there's is, a degree I of mean, execution to it. Yeah, it it isn't that hard. Like I literally got that achievement in a pug uh, when I was like doodling around throughout a week. Uh, it's really not that hard, and in my opinion, escort is like one of these extremely uninteresting event and when I when I every time I play it I get the feeling that the raid crew designed it so that they could just show that they made beautiful models for the outside of the castle. <laughs> not that not that any mechanic is actually interesting. Yes, there is a war coming from behind. Yes, if you ignore the NPC it's gonna get attacked. Yes, you need to move the NPC around. This is this is not fun. This is not interesting. This is not. Yeah, I agree. This is this is just a pain you have to put through. To, you have to go through. I mean, to get to Casey, and then you do Casey, and then you do this stupid ass castle, and then you do Sarah, and then you're like, Raid Wing Three is on, and it wasn't fun. I like. At wing least that's my feeling lot. every week. Sorry, Brazil. I like. Europe, I like. Delete Wing again. Three. Yeah, I'm right. Yes, delete Wing Three. Later. Yeah, delete Wing Three. Like fuck it. I think wow. Zera is the best fight out of all of the raids, but it has a lot of missed potential. I'll be fair with that and say that. But... I mean, I agree. They tried something cool, I guess, on Xehar, but it just didn't work yeah. out really, to be fair. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I think it could have been much better than it was. Um, and I've given a lot of thought to other stuff, too. Wing 1 is still my favorite. I think Wing 1 is probably the best content they've ever designed for PvE. It's very good. Uh, the spirit runs bad, and the event before that is bad. Um, the bandit trio is just horrible. I don't like Matthias or Slothazor. I don't like any of Wing 2. Um, and the Twisted Castle is probably worse than events in Queensdale. It's just... Uh, I, I, it's, it's cool for the first time. And the environment... And like how it looks, all that is great, but it's just so poorly designed that like I would rather not ever have to do it again. And it doesn't even give you anything. It just serves as like a gate for the ectoplasms. That's its only purpose. It's a so, yeah. yeah. But I think like, I mean, Matthias your, your and Sloths sorry, yeah, just go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I just wanted to say like I think Slothosaur and Matthias are pretty cool fights, so I think they're good mechanics. What but trio? I think I think Sloth like Zor is a good fight, but I don't like it, and I just hate everything about Matthias. It's just I I think it's poorly designed. Hmm. I, I know you disagree with me a lot, Teapot. You yeah. think it's like the best one of all, but yeah, I do think Matthias is the like best it. fight. I think Matthias. I, is, is, I am on your side too. I I would I kind of have Matthias as the measuring stick for all the other fights. I think it's. Kind of yep. what Raids and Guild Wars 2 should well, be. It, to, it to, has to a good fair. chunk of mechanics. The fight changes a whole bunch. You get new mechanics coming in, which is a good way of having a lot of mechanics, right? Because that means you don't overload the ones you have at any given time. You just filter through them as the fight progresses. I, I think Matthias is also a really good measuring stick because all of the events are worse than it is and all the other bosses are better than it. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's quite a good measuring <laughs> stick, actually. Hmm. But I... I like Sloth I think too. Sabatha, I think Sabbath is a really good fight. I've thought about this a whole lot. Yeah. And I think Veil vale Guardian might be the best one. Sabbath might be the best. Veil vale Guardian's very good. And Veil vale Guardian is just, it's like, I would go as so far as to say that it's probably like almost perfect because it has mechanics that build up very well from what they are. It's like taking math classes over a course of a couple of years. It builds very well. Like, it is designed for you to have to use multiple types of builds and classes. Like, you can just obliterate it if you're very, very, very good. And if you're very bad, then just, you won't ever beat it. So, I think it's a very, very good encounter. Yeah. Yeah. VG is probably my favorite fight. Just right mm -hmm. after. Oh, no, I think VG is. I guess my favorite then Matthias. Yeah, I think I think we can all agree on that. That's like that's the like, good I mean, stuff. I mean, this like the the good way to uh, to see whether an encounter is uh, interestingly designed or not is also to see the feedback that the uh, less hardcore part of the community would give about it. 
like for example you always have these people commenting on reddit forums whatever even on streams that they find that vg is one of the hardest fights this is actually because the mechanics are so well designed that everyone actually has to be aware and to do something which proves that the fight is interesting meanwhile when you do wing three and like you're at escort it's like you only need to like move around follow whichever subgroup you're in destroy yeah. mines pull some trash and kill it like the uh it's it's a good way to measure like the the interest people put towards a raid boss or not is it hard do people struggle with mechanics yeah then mechanics were probably better designed oh i agree with that i i, I do think though that um some of the mechanics in other wings do do matter though i mean you know on kc a single person can instantly ruin everything by yeah. not doing a mechanic correctly, right? Or yeah. I don't know. Let's just as well. Yeah, yeah. On Sorthor, so you know, you get a bad poison. The the situation is fucked. Or if someone pulls in your friendly slublink, well, okay, I guess we're screwed. You can recover sometimes, but a lot of the time you just get wrecked. Um, I don't know. So I, I think, but I definitely think Veil vale Guardian is just it's a shining example. Definitely agree with that. A shining example of what raids can be. I don't know, someone just gave me money. Yeah, I know. Langus, oh, I need money what, as well. What a guy. Yeah, yeah I need money as well. Like, come on, guys. Like, I need I need to pay for better internet because I can't live like this. Right. I mean, honestly, guys, you know, we just got to lay it down. Langus, he knows what to do. He paid his taxes. Five dollars. <laughs> uh, this is not free entertainment. Come on. We, I mean, we've we've got pretty much... I'm just going just gonna to throw it down, guys. We, we basically got the four best players in the game here on this, uh, on Tea Time today. So, you know, honestly, you should be paying all of us. You can obviously go to all the other streams, give them money. You know? Very. Easy. We all donated CX for that. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, thanks, man. I love you, dude. You've done well. You've done well, my servant. You've done well. Four best. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, I, I, yeah. I, 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 we kind of digress because I... of the money. Well... Um, <laughs> I definitely agree with you, Sam. You know, oh, watching what did Zach me? People who get wrecked are the people <laughs> who find the encounters. You know, it's find the good encounters. You know, that's why sloth sloth has killed the most players. Sloth is just savage; it just kills everyone. And yeah. you know, I think it's a great boss as well. It's, I think it's I think it's fun. You've got the personal responsibility. And, you know, sloth, veil vale guardian, Sabatha. It's all good stuff. And Matthias, but yeah, those are the best. Yeah, I don't know. But what is this? Poorly designed? How so? Twisted Castle has interesting mechanics we haven't seen elsewhere. Looks cool, and doesn't really have any bugs to speak of. The initial what the fuck do we do factor fits the theme very well. It's not hard once you learn it. Maybe it could do us a couple of nicer rewards. A skin or two. I don't think it's too bad of an encounter. No, I don't really mind the Twisted Castle. It's just a pasta. That's that's incorrect. Oh, is it? Shit. Oh, have I, have I just been memed? It. Have I actually hey, just been baited? Oh, we should host God, Age no. Night Road. He's not. Nah, you're not gonna get me this time. He All ain't right. streaming. Maybe he actually is though. Shit. <laughs> no, he is. I just checked. I don't. I actually don't believe you. And if I ask right. chat, they'll just troll me. Uh, but I mean, I think we've come to a, no, a fitting I was, end. I was. I was. I was trolling. He's yeah. not actually streaming. I think we've come to a fitting end to this special tea time. It has no boots or inks on it. Good riddance. Am I right? <laughs> yeah. Bye, bye, guys. Uh, so. The time has come. The time has come for us to find out who everyone on this uh, this show is, and I think we'll start with our two fantastic special guests, which are of course Sam and Hater. So, Hater, who are you? Oh, I guess yeah. People call me Hater or Haters. Just call me Marcel as well. I think that's. I prefer being called Marcel. Uh, leader of Quantify, I guess. Bad at the game. Can. Find you can find me on YouTube if you want. Just look for was up haters. Give us to you, I guess. I don't know. Or just check out our website, quantify or qtfi.engine.com. It's the best website on the internet. Uh, That's incorrect. Nothing. I actually check it out two hand times. All right. I mean, like to be, like no joke now. I mean, we put a lot of effort in it though. Like 
I, I think it's good. Yeah, definitely shows. Yeah, your your website, website is actually great. Yeah, yeah, it is very well designed. Yeah. I can show you the best website in the in the whole internet. You want to see? Is it my Twitch page? No. My Twitter actually. <laughs> it is a Twitter page. Is it my Twitter? Though. It is my Twitter. It's a, it's, it's it's a Twitter. That's the oh, best guys, website. Oh, guys, actually follow me on Twitter. I have no followers. I do nothing on Twitter, but yeah, just follow go. me. Why not? Yes. <laughs> follow haters, guys. Follow Marcel. Marcel hater. Easy. All right, Sam, what do you do? Well, I mean, uh, hello, I'm Sam. Like, you guys have probably known me for the last two years because I did stream on and off, depending on whether I was studying, working, whatever. Uh, I am a French guy. I used to be uh, the leader of Snow Crows. Uh, I, uh, I gave the, the leadership back to another Frenchie because I suck at the game due to not playing it enough to keep up the level. I mostly do some stupid PvE stuff. I suck at my weekly raids and I play with salt almost every day of the week because the memes are real. And uh, apart from that, I do trading posts and economy stuff. And actually, most of the people following my YouTube channel are following it for that reason. So if you want to like, check it, you probably already know it. I'm Sam Majeste. It's written exactly the same as the stream title on, um, on YouTube and on Twitter. It's going to be quite simple for that one. All right. And in the bottom left corner, we have the diseased, the poisoned, the diseased and poisoned and bleeding the, as well. The real Brazil. life necromancer. Real life necromancer. He used corruption. He used corruptions to transfer the conditions yeah. onto you guys. I, I didn't have a cleanse. Yeah. He didn't have deathly Drew, swarm. Druids. Druids could cleanse oh, you. Oh, yeah. You don't like them. Yeah, yeah. They could just put some glyphs I on you and you'd be good. But... Where's my cloth again? Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, hey, everyone. Uh, I'm Brazil. You may know me as there is no best, there is just best at, but I'm actually the best uh, at any and all encounter in the game. So if you want to see the best at any and all encounter in the game, you can just Google Brazil GW2. And you can find anything about me you want. All right. So there we go. There it is. If you're a doctor, I will look for please you. whisper me because I need your help. <laughs> so, need some condition cleanse. Yeah, I've also become a German because my voice is dropped by like two octaves, so that's cool too. All right. But yeah, there we are. And then there's me. I am the best player in the game. Uh, Minstrels Chrono gameplay. That's what you can see on the stream sometimes, and some other shit as well. Obviously, Tea Time, the best podcast in the world. Uh, not just limited to Guild Wars 2, just to, just across everything, really. You know, uh, it's the good stuff. QT.com is actually a weird site, actually. Um, but anyway, yes, follow this stream. Then go follow me on Twitter and subscribe on YouTube and watch every single Tea Time ever. Um, thanks for watching, my friends. And we'll just go host someone.